welcome, 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 welcome everyone, everyone to another state of chess.com. It's been a few months, but as promised, this would be a regular thing. We are going to dive into a lot today. We're going to talk about all the goings and happenings on our website for the last several months. But the biggest, one of the biggest stories that broke this quarter, and one of the biggest reasons why I think we already have about 3,000 of you with us is because world champion Vladimir Kromnik graced us with an article uh, this month where he talked about his work with the DeepMind team, the team behind AlphaZero, uh, that uh, neural network that shocked the world when it dominated and took out Stockfish, and some of his thoughts in regards to what chess maybe, maybe can do at the highest levels to continue to help uh, this, I guess you would call it growing trend, that chess is really hard. And when these guys are prepared really well, uh, it's hard to get an advantage out of the opening. But some of the issues that might be presented with some of the other variants that change the game, uh, he has an idea that, that was met with uh, a lot of interest uh, by the chess world this, uh, this month. And so without further ado, let me remind you who Vladimir Kromnik is. Of course, he is uh, a chess legend, a, a former world champion, uh, from 2000 to 2007, he was the guy that beat Gary Kasparov in the year 2000 when many didn't think it was, it was time or possible yet to take down Gary Kasparov. I, I don't feel like I need to give much more of an introduction, Vladimir, besides maybe that you're also, you were also my childhood chess hero. You knew that, right? I think I told you that at the Isle of Man last yes. year. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good, and, so good morning, or even if it's evening actually here, but as I understand in the U.S., it's early morning. So hello, everyone. Thank, thank you for being here, uh, joining us from your, from your home in Switzerland. Yeah, it's evening for you, morning for us. And I, before we dive into all this stuff, I told you the story of when I was in Russia training with Dvoretsky, and I was actually with Dolmatov. We were working on opening. Mm -hmm. And I, I, at the time, was reading uh, a book series called uh, The o Opening Repertoire According to Vladimir Kromnik. Um, and Sergei mm -hmm. Dolmatov, of course, by, by Alexander Herleifman, Sergei Dolmatov convinced me that I needed to go with E4, rather than the repertoire that uh, Kromnik was employing at the time with the, with the Knight of 3, C4. So I made a huge mm -hmm. mistake. No, I'm kidding. I, I took Sergei's advice and we worked on E4, but you actually called, you actually called and talked to Dolmatov on the phone while I was there. I, did I tell you this story at the Isle of Man? Uh, yes, of course. Yes, of okay. course. Yes, you did. So I, yeah, I remember, well, actually, when I, I remember hearing your voice on the phone and it like literally like made my day. So you were, you were world <laughs> champion was, was actually... Sergey was my coach for quite a few years, and he yeah. was also trying to convince me to play for him, uh, but uh, he didn't manage at that time, at least. Well, he managed, uh, with, I, he I managed still, with me. Uh, um, yeah, I went with his repertoire. He recommended the entire kind of universal open Sicilian English attack kind of system, so we were spending a lot of time working on that, um, even though, like I said, mm -hmm. I, was, I was trying to go down the path of Vladimir Kromnik's repertoire at the time. So. Um, anyway, let's let's. Mine, start. mine is safer, you know. My repertoire is very solid and safe. So. Very, very solid. At least safe, at yeah. that time. Then I started to play for myself later on. I, I probably would have been better for it, but anyway, let, let's let's dive in here, uh, Vladimir. Movie. There's been there's been so much about this. Uh, this article is um, maybe the most popular article we had all year. So thank you, thank you so much for for everything you did. I mean, the comment section after this uh, this article went crazy. Five hundred and eighty three comments. I don't think we've had an engaged uh, piece. And, and as much, call it controversy, with, with, with so many different types of people getting involved, from title players to, to beginners. And um, I guess mm -hmm. I'm not going to dive in and ask you to explain kind of the basics of your point, because that's been made, and hopefully people tuning in have already checked out the article. But I do want to ask you some of the direct questions that have come up. And maybe the most common criticism, if you will, about your suggestion has been, yes, um, I think something maybe you could clear up today about what your goals really were with this suggestion, that... that taking away castles would be bad for beginners and bad for kids learning the game. And, and I wanted to give you a chance to talk about what your main goals were with this suggestion and why you, may, why you maybe don't think that's a relevant point. Uh, well, to start with, I would like to mention that actually it was more of a joint article with uh, DeepMind because I was, I mean, it was mostly mine, but uh, there are some certain technical issues which they were uh, trying to explain and it was a uh, part. Uh, so, but the rest was written by by me myself. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, okay, in fact, we uh, it was pretty accidental. I mean, I was thinking about those ideas because as a chess professional, I mean, I know 
you know, maybe better than than others. Uh, how yeah, how unpleasant is it nowadays? All this open theory. I mean, unless right. uh, uh, if you want just to play chess, because after all, chess is a game. Yeah, you, I, I want to play, but somehow it's becoming more and more difficult to get a game on the top level. I'm not talking about any other. Of course, on the amateur level or club player, it's perfectly fine. I mean, uh, but uh, so that's why I had different ideas uh, in my mind. But you know, I, I don't like to get public with certain ideas which haven't been checked carefully because you know there are many interesting ideas which sound great, but they might not simply work. Right. I mean, simply in a mathematically in a way. Yeah. Because for example. This idea of uh, which I've heard for, for quite a long time already about uh, stalemate being a victory, I have a feeling it's not going to work simply. I mean, mathematically. But uh, okay, actually, we are still we are also checking this as well. <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are some issues I can go into it deeper, uh, but I think it's not working. Uh, anyway, anyway, so and I see that there is a clear demand now. You know, there is more and more actually. Uh, all sorts of uh, chess like Fischer Random, which is you know getting more and more popular and I, I also know that players not only uh, the public uh, but also the players are getting a bit bored with all these theories and with all these uh, uh, force lines which leads to, to a draw most of the time or if not draws and nobody plays it so uh, there is a certain issue I mean it's not a drama there is nothing dramatic but uh, if it keeps on going like this I think there will be one day when we need to, to do something about it. Yeah? Right. Because I can give you this example of checkers, which actually I like. It's a very good game, a very interesting game, I find. And uh, it used to be quite popular, uh, if you remember, like 30 years ago, at least. I remember there were all sorts of uh, reports about uh, checkers, you know, world championship match and so on. I, I haven't heard anything in the mainstream media about checkers for I don't know how many years already. Right. It kind of disappeared. And why? Because there were just draws, you know, in the World Championship matches. I remember the last one I was following a bit. Okay, it was like 20 games draw, whatever. Games and, and that draw, worries you a little time, bit. It worries you about chess. Rapid time control draw, and then finally in Blitz somebody wins, and he's the World Champion. Of course it is, I mean, it's a clear education. Yeah, it worries me. I mean, I don't want chess to go in the same direction. Yes, yeah? so, uh, I mean, we are not there yet, don't misunderstand me, but we are going there, you right. know, it's inevitable. And, uh, and you know, if you take, if you consider many different sports, like football, or many, many, uh, volleyball, for example, from time to time, they're adjusting the rules, just, you know, because, and also in chess, Actually, through the years, through the centuries, you know, just adjusting the rules from time to time. I don't see anything actually dramatic in right. in, in making a, a small twist, which would actually increase the content of the game and interest, etc., etc. So, and then yeah, we had a chance actually to work a bit with uh, DeepMind, uh, with there. In fact, right. our main work is not about it at all <laughs> it's uh, another issue but on, on the meantime you know having a coffee we started to exchange our ideas with uh, uh, the guys Nenad Tomashev and Uli Rapatia who was who are the main people behind Alpha Zero and with uh, Dennis Hasabis himself the CIO of DeepMind who is a big chess fan actually and uh, he was a very strong chess player uh, and then uh, sometime at the age of 15, he was one of the best British uh, juniors uh, in chess. And uh, actually, he told me we even played once in the same tournament in uh, Ockham 90. But you didn't, you didn't remember that? In fact. Uh, no, I, I mean, we didn't play a game with, with the child. It was an open tournament, but he ah, was okay. playing there as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, so he was at some time at the age of 15, he was uh, compared, I mean, and um, he was clever enough, I mean, compared to me, to, to stop chess and to go to, to maths and so on. And uh, he made a great career. Okay, I'm kidding, of course, but uh, uh, but he still likes chess. And actually, he he was getting also interested in this idea. He said, okay, let's try. Let's. Uh, we, had, we had a actually 
a, a full set of different ideas. Yeah. I mean, our, what I want to tell that actually my point was to start with the most, most, I would say, safe variation. Yeah. I mean, and then to try to, uh, to try something more cardinal, yeah, more, more uh, uh, conceptual changes. So, because that's, that's the beginning, just let's start with no castle, yeah, because that doesn't change any rule of the game. You don't need to learn anything. You know, you don't need to, you know, all the patterns, everything is familiar. So, I mean, there were, actually there are two rules in chess which have no, uh, uh, which are exclusions, yeah, of rules. This is castle and, and parcel, yeah. I mean, this, these two things are quite strange, yeah, they don't actually get together with the logic of chess, in my opinion. But in Passan, I was started to, uh, to think about it, and I understood why. I mean, this rule is probably quite important, although we are still going to check it as well. But, uh, you know, if not this rule, then it would be quite easy, especially in end games, to block uh, the position, yeah? In most of end games, let's say you go h4, I don't know, h4, g4, g5, then he plays h5, and, and everything is blocked. Or h5, he plays g5. Then, I mean, I'm afraid if the drawish margin will uh, increase enormously in end games uh, without this rule. So that might be actually a very serious, uh, 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 serious reason be uh, behind this and Sun rule. Mm -hmm. But with castles, actually, it is quite strange because. Uh, in fact, it doesn't add anything to a game. I mean, it doesn't make it, it doesn't make it more entertaining or, or decisive or whatever. It just changes the game a bit, yeah? It just, it just, the game is different with, with castles and without castles, but, but it's not better or worse, yeah? And then I started to think if you're interested in this kind of uh, lyrical, uh, my, my uh, lyrical speech, uh, I started to, to I asked myself a question, actually, why? Why did they implement it? Because it was not, originally it was not existing, the rule. And uh, I actually got only two reasonable ideas. I can't get, uh, I mean, uh, I couldn't find any other sensible explanation why all of a sudden sometime in the 15th century or something, I don't know exactly, they, they invented this rule. I think the most logical explanation to me, seems to be that, you know, I, I guess at that time, uh, people were playing quite badly, yeah? chess, I mean, uh, not so many who played chess, and actually, probably with the king on the center, they would just get under attack and get mated on move 15 or something, you know, right. so maybe it was a re it was the idea behind it was just to prolong the game, somehow to make it, you know, that you can escape castle, and then at least, you know, it's much more difficult to well, attack your king, so. Let, mm -hmm. let me, let me ask about that, because, you, you mentioned, I mean, we started off with the, the question and um, Tim Wall had an article this morning and there, like I said, there's been a lot of comments about uh, whether taking away casting would be bad for beginners. But I, I actually, regardless of your point, which is that your, your idea was mainly for professionals and for high level chess, still, I, I, are, are the principles of king safety and central control inherently gone from what you would teach kids or beginners just because we take away the ability to castle? I mean, I would argue no, right? I mean, it might just change the way we approach those types of things in terms of king safety no, and but, central control. But what are your thoughts course, on that? Of uh, all, course, all, all the principles still the same. I mean, right. it's still a game of chess, nothing changed. Yeah, I mean, let's say uh, there are quite, quite few games when people don't castle yet, yeah, both players, so then it's no castle chess. So, I mean, uh, nothing changed. It's just that the patterns are changing. I mean, the Patterns we are used to, they are changed, but, uh, uh, you know, so we actually have to reinvent again, to rediscover, not to reinvent, to rediscover uh, uh, the patterns which, uh, you know, uh, which are existing in this type of, of chess, but it's still chess. I mean, all basic rules of chess are still valid, no doubt about it. You have to fight for the center, develop pieces, right. in safety. All positional things, you know, don't make weaknesses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Everything is there. I mean, so uh, uh, well, I mean, let's see. In any case, I don't uh, expect that this type of chess will overtake, you know, uh, uh, everything in a year or two. Uh, it's not impossible that in few years it will be become more popular than than. Uh, than this, so so to say, uh, standard chess. Yeah, well, but let's... not immediately. 
Uh, but in are... any case, a very important point, yeah, just before uh, I want to make a very Go important ahead. point. My idea is not to, you know, to overrule chess or any other type of chess or Fischer random. I mean, everybody should play what they like to play. It just, uh, I, um, I'm just offering another variation of right. chess, which, uh, you know, which takes away the theory and leaves chess as we know it. But uh, it's totally up to everyone to decide what he likes or what she likes. And uh, I mean, let's see, let's see if people would like it more than Fisher Random or less than Fisher Random. It's okay. It's just a, right. it's just a, a proposal. That is one very important point uh, to avoid misunderstanding. I'm not going to say that this is the, this is the chess we are going to play from tomorrow on, and uh, and everything else goes to the rubbish bin. No, it's of course it's not. It's not. Uh, Right. Yeah. You touched on, on the Fisher Random um, topic, and that was actually something I wanted to bring up next, because um, in your article, you, you make a great point, uh, which I really liked, which is that one of the potential drawbacks of Fisher Random, which, okay, was a very exciting event in Oslo, and I was there, and obviously, Wesley So kind of shocked the world by being able to beat Magnus Carlsen in a match like this, which I don't think he does in classical, but you made a good point, which is that as far as the perception of the game and presenting chess to non-traditional audiences, when the pieces are random, it, it can be very confusing, especially to people that are just on the fringe, uh, in the fence, right? They don't know chess as well, and chess already needs to be in more mainstream media in general. We want the game to grow. And so I found that to be a really, a really um, compelling point, especially combined with kind of uh, your point about checkers. And so I, that's sort of a long-winded way of coming around to do you feel that the game um, needs needs perception changes in order to continue to grow in mainstream media? Is it do you do you worry about that? Because I can tell you, as obviously as a big chess website, when the Classical World Championship was going on, we get we get a lot of calls for interviews, and pretty much every call I got from the New York Times or ESPN was was reporters wanting to talk to me about why nobody can win at classical chess. And I can tell you that was literally the topic line of every journalist that I was contacted by, and it was. It was very difficult to explain and, and, and go into, but I know, ultimately, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on that, right? I mean, do you believe the game needs a perception makeover, if you will, and that this no castles chess, because it still looks like traditional chess, might be, might be a way to go in the future? I don't think there is a, you know, harsh necessity, but I, I believe it will be better for everyone, because it's true that... Uh, you know, nowadays uh, on the very top level, especially for the events like World Championship match, you know, quite often people, you know, they come for one game with their kids, you know, maybe even they fly sometimes from uh, another part of the planet just to see the a game, you know, they buy tickets and finally what happens if both players are in fighting, in fighting mood, but somehow just the realization out of the opening because both are very well prepared and, and quite right. a boring quick draw. In fact, it was not the case in this match and it was quite accidental actually that all 12 games ended in a draw. Normally, at least there should have been a couple of decisive games, but still it is uh, actually, it's a bit worrying. And it's to me, it's clear that if everyone who watches the game live coming there or on internet if he can be sure that it will be a very complicated uh, you know full fight and uh, and players can start to play from move one or three or five maximum not from move 20 i mean that would be better for, right. for chess in general i mean right. that's that's quite logical uh, i believe and uh, uh, that's that's why i think okay it's uh, for of course for chess players for professionals maybe it's it's better like it is now because you are very much in familiar familiar space you know you you know exactly if you get this type of position you're not going to lose you relax right. and you try you press but i mean that is also what i what i find a bit conceptually again it's it's more philosophical than practical but i i don't like the idea conceptually that you know it's a game let's say it's a sport can you tell me any other sport any a single one where actually you know you you can half of the match okay you are playing by not playing actually by simply making the moves which you prepare which your computer prepared at home yeah right. i mean there is a lot of preparation involved in any sports but once the whistle is you know <laughs> no you're right you, you, no... the start, yeah. then you start to play i mean it's it's a game but here it can be that for one hour actually one guy is playing another guy is not playing right <laughs> and this happens quite often and 
Uh, it's okay, but conceptually there is something wrong about this concept, yeah, because it has to be a game very quickly. You know, you have to start playing the game. And uh, so, so in my opinion, it's uh, maybe it's not absolutely necessary now, but I see the direction it's going. It's sooner or later it's going to be a necessity. And already now, for this much, I've heard also a lot of people who are kind of, you know, a bit demotivated. By, by all those draws and some of them were, no, the guys were fighting. I mean, it's, it's not their fault, but just that the opening theory is like this, that, you know, you cannot be sure in any game you play, you cannot be sure that it will not be sterilized. And uh, yeah, why not to try something uh, about it? I mean, something smooth and which doesn't change that much. And about Fisher Random, no, there are a couple of issues about Fisher Random. I mean, it's a nice game, and I, I, everybody, if people like it, I mean, I have nothing against it. But also, it has its drawbacks as well. Uh, one of it is, as you mentioned, yeah, that actually, if you don't imagine, you don't have an engine with you, right? But actually, you don't understand at all what's going on. I mean, I can tell you, I, as a, you know, not a bad chess player, but I, I don't understand what's going on actually uh, without an engine. Well, I, I can tell you, even 10, even minutes. with an engine, I mean, for 10, 15 minutes, the best. I mean, that's not enough time. I mean, like it, it takes a. It, very, the best players in the world didn't have an idea of what was going on in Oslo in a lot of the starting positions. It, it gets very, very tricky very early. Yeah, I mean, which is okay. It's okay, but it's also a bit uh, kind of confusing maybe for spectators, especially, right. you know, that actually they start to, to get the point, I would say, about the people who, who like chess and who are club players. I mean, okay, if they don't have an engine, I think they just don't understand who is better, what is going on, why is this move, why is that move, and that is not so... Great, also in my opinion, although it's perfectly fine chess. And the second issue is actually, which nobody really raised, but uh, it's very important under which conditions uh, this Fisher Random is played tournament. Yeah, because actually the matter of the preparation issue becomes extremely important. Right. In Fisher Random, uh, if you give a bit of time, I mean, uh, between uh, the moment the position uh, is settled and uh, and the moment the game starts. Because, you know, it's pretty clear to me that it's nine, 960 positions, yeah? which takes maybe one month, even a few machines, let's say one night per position to analyze it very well. I mean, you know, at least first few moves. And then you have it on your computer. And then if you have at least 15 minutes in between the position and, uh, you know, when the position is clear and the game, you go, your trainer brings you this analysis, you refresh it, you know, of all 96, he finds this particular position, you refresh it, and you have a huge advantage towards mm -hmm. a player who does who didn't do it. I mean, uh, and uh, then you can just, I mean, so it's also, I believe that Fisher Random is only valid, in my opinion, if, let's say, just the position is settled just before the, you know, the players are already on the field, are already sitting there, then they give the position and you push the clock. That's the only way to make it uh, you know, to avoid theory. Otherwise, it only increases actually the preparation. We, we've, uh, that's that's my point of view. No, it, it makes a lot of sense. And we, we've talked a lot about, um, obviously, you made a great point right at the beginning of the interview that almost every other game throughout history has considered rule changes and tweaks and things to continue to keep it um, exciting or, or they learn something or the players evolve so that the, so the rules committee has to evolve in order to keep it competitive because the players are better. And with technology, and the age that we're in now, and the players having the resources they do, for chess to not change something in the X's and O's on the board, it might seem counter, you know, counterintuitive compared to what a lot of other sports have done. And on that note, I want to ask, it seems that a, what a lot of the tournament cycles are trying to do is avoid this sort of change on the board. They're doing things like rewarding more points, right, for a victory with white, the, th the three points for white, or, or uh, you know, it can be extra points for a draw with black. I wanted to ask about that because we just got done with our coverage of the Grand Chess Tour Finals, and of course, mm -hmm. we know a lot of events have done that. Um, that seems to be kind of a, a newer thing over the last few years. That wasn't a very common thing in, in um, I guess, you know, 10, 15 years ago. But what are your thoughts on that as far as finding more non-on-the-board ways to motivate decisive chess? Do you think it's just, just not worth it, or what are your thoughts on things like uh that? I mean, uh, I, I've spoken to many colleagues of mine, and I'm of the same opinion. I mean, almost everyone tells the same. It doesn't make any difference. Right. I mean, you're not playing different chess with it. Because 
basically you're playing according to the position. Right. I mean, uh, don't misunderstand. There are not so many players uh, who are trying to play very safe and to make a draw. I mean, most of the players they are trying to play just that you don't get a chance. I mean, you play some opening, something comes, some opening iteration of your opponent, and you just cannot manage. I mean, you you know that if you start to do something risky, you're going to lose. I mean, right. And uh, that's what I was doing last years, actually, anyway, <laughs> because I didn't care that much, you know, about, but I knew that I'm not doing right thing profession. I knew that I'm going to score less points. I just was kind of tired of this, you know, I wanted to get some, some fun going on. I was already semi-professional, I would say, for the last two, few years. I would, uh, but if you are a real professional, you want to, to win tournaments to get most points. You are you are going to play according to the position. And it's it's more a problem of the game. The game is quite... I mean, it is drawish in essence, but if you... The problem is not this, because it's still a complicated game. But if you have so much knowledge of the game in its, in its form, which is now... As, as you have and you're a strong player, then it makes it quite difficult to, to win a game of, right. you know, against strong opponent. But take away this knowledge, like start to play from move one, uh, there's no castle chess or, or any other chess, and you see the amount of draws will be reduced enormously because it's just, just a complicated game. I mean, the problem is not in the game of chess, the problem is that there is too much knowledge now. Right. Uh, yeah, so I think that that is, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's so, what I wanted to avoid, actually. I mean, and, and I don't think, I mean, there are many, many ideas. In fact, talking about this uh, three points for win, whatever, you know, there are many ideas. And in, I can give you a secret. We are having in our pipeline with, with Alpha Zero a few more ideas, actually. Okay. It's just the beginning, you know, <laughs> it's not well, that, that's That was going to be my last one of the ideas. I'm really glad you touched it's on just that. One of can the can you say? Yeah, it's just, I know you're. Not, I know it's very top secret stuff with DeepMind and Google. But are you allowed to say anything about what you're currently working on with the Alpha Zero team, or, or any thoughts about? Can you share anything about about what what you're currently doing with them? I, I don't think I, I I should. I mean, because it's uh, yeah. I mean, you know, if they want, they can do it themselves. I mean, but we are working on different things. One is not connected at all on with all these issues with engine rules. And another is, yes, we are working on a few different ideas, which we both, all, all of us had, about okay. how, how it's possible to change certain rules in chess and to make it interesting, to make some new game, I mean, just to offer it to the public. And uh, there are a few more which are getting cooked, I would okay. say, in the laboratory, but uh, everything in its time. But I thought that this one is more, I mean, actually quite a few of them, they change the game very much. It, uh, but this one is really the softest, the smoothest one. That's why, and actually, I like very much the outcome. I mean, we we've checked it very seriously. Alpha Zero played lots of lots of games. I mean, what we published is just a small part of it, and uh, I I really liked it as a professional. I mean, aesthetically, you know, I find it extremely entertaining, very dynamic, a lot of complications, and uh, yeah, it's quite clear to me that. Uh, this problem of, let's say, boring games will be solved right. for many, many years to come with this idea. But okay, again, it's, a, it's a, you know, up to everyone to, to like it or not. But one thing I want to say is that before judging it, I think we need some practice. We need to play some, maybe some tournaments, some people who like chess, they can try to play it and then to see how it goes, yeah. I mean, uh, because, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, if we have, if you see a few top tournaments with these rules, I'm sure spectators would love it. But, uh, you know, okay. I, I can be wrong, with that, but would, I would really like if, yeah, it will be, it will be checked in practice. Well, I'm, I'm excited um, for that opportunity. Like you said, it's, uh, it's hard to win games as professionals, but I am not a professional and I don't win many chess games, but I'm going to give it a try right now as you and I talked about and let you kind of do commentary. So um, oh, great, great. The, uh, what's going to happen right now, everybody, is I'm going to play a game very similar to what world champion Vladimir Kromnik did versus Boris Gelfand, playing by the rules of No Castles Chess, even though my opponent is not going to be playing by the rules of No Castles Chess and maybe doesn't even know what I'm doing. So... We're just going to play a three-minute blitz game to bring our interview to a close here. I'm, I'm searching for an opponent, and here we go. A 2,500 rated Grandmaster. I actually yeah. beat, the, I beat this guy in regular chess yesterday, uh, Vladimir. So let's see. Thinking about uh, 
Well, I mean, if 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 he is going to castle and you're not going to castle, then you have a problem. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, it has to be a fair game. But well, okay, I'm going to okay, try, try it anyway. Yeah, that's what, what you did can. with Boris Gelfand, right? He castled and you didn't. Whoa. Uh, well, I mean, you can change your mind at any moment. Yeah. Okay. He... Uh, I mean, if if things are going bad, you just castle at some point. But he he resigned, so we're going to do this again. I'm going to. Resigned. Yeah, yeah. He understood. That was that was decide. strange. I, I think I fall. Okay, whatever. Yeah. I have this idea if I play like a, a maybe maybe some sort of like London system, I might have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better probably, chances yeah. with my king on f1. We'll see. But uh, what are your what are your thoughts on on the London system here? Well, I mean, at the beginning, just develop pieces, and then I would yeah. yeah, I mean, in a normal way, and then I would suggest that you will. Okay, in this particular setup, maybe castle is not that. Okay. Maybe I'll, I mean, I can actually, you know, maybe I can do something. Yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Not, not just maybe knight to five or yeah, yeah, h4. I like yeah, it. I mean, of course, it makes it look logical to try yeah. to do something like that. Yeah, h4. Yeah. All right, I so mean, he doesn't know that I'm not going to castle. Yeah, in, but in fact, now it's good with you. I mean, you're not going to castle anyway. I mean, yeah. maybe long castle one day, but. Uh, but I can't castle. Uh, it's against I, the rules. I won't. I won't. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean that uh, now, now actually you played an opening very well. And in fact, he will regret that he castled. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he, 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 will, he will really regret it. I think he will get He paid. went right into my plan here. So, that's nice. Um, hey. All right, but I of... think I'm just going to blow everything open here. I mean. It's yeah, really... yeah, it's very really like. Oh, oh. Yeah, I don't know. Wait a second. Can you do this? Okay. Uh, mm, you can, but why? I mean, yeah. What's the I point? I don't think there is a big. Uh, go queen g. Yeah, I like queen g four best. Yeah, Although be. he's taking e five. No, oh, no, 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 it's okay. No, I mouse slipped. You will. No, no. I mouse yeah, slipped. That was. Yeah, yeah. That's not. Great, That's not good. Uh, you are in some trouble. <laughs> it's a big trouble now. Oh man, that's not good. Oh, it's okay, Queen H2, and you will mate him on, on H line anyway. Yeah, yeah, I'll mate him on H line. I like your confidence in me. I appreciate that. Because <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. Ah, oh, it's going to happen. No, no, you won't care. It just deals. Well, now I'm really feeling the pain of not being able to castle. Um, mm, then castle? <laughs> no, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't yeah, do it. Yeah, okay, okay. No, then go, okay, queen e2 or something. Yeah. All right. But I want, I want to run my king okay. and get the other rook involved somehow. Yeah, yeah. Man, that mouse slip really hurt. Mm-hmm. All right. It's not over yet, like he said. I have to believe... Yeah, it's okay, it's okay, of course. Maybe I can I even mean, slide this one. Can at some point, yeah, King of one can jump. Oh, King of one, you have to watch out for Bishop oh, A6. Bishop A6, but, A6 will, yeah. it, but yeah, no, no, yeah, it's okay. You'll play C4. Yeah. I mean, and he's going to go for it anyway, but I'm okay with this. Now it's yeah, closed. Yeah, that's okay, yeah. I got the knight. You know, if I could yeah, just play is. as well as Kramnik from here on out, I'd probably be okay. So... Uh, well, it depends on the level of your opponent. In general, your position is not rosy, yeah? but uh, <laughs> right, okay, he that's... He's got nothing. Yeah, you see, you have Casa, and your rook is active now, just yeah. yeah. Here we go, we'll do something over here. You see, otherwise it would have been on F1, somewhere boring, yeah, no, your rook yeah. is an attack. Yeah, this is much better. Mm hmm. Main what thing right now, I realize we're playing yeah. three minute chess. I gotta play fast too. Oh, he wants a draw? Uh, 90, 91, 91, 91. Why does he want to draw? Decisive. That doesn't seem right. Why draw? Ah, he's, asked, he's offering a draw. I don't know why he offered a draw. Yeah, but we've got a, we've got a home for our knight. He wants to win some rating. No, of course we are going. I mean, you're going to win. What, you know? oh, just check out what kind of mating G5 ideas. This might be a bit annoying at some point. Mm, I don't know. Okay. No, you don't like it? I mean, you'll need to run with your king at some point, probably. 
He, is he going to mate me? Maybe. Uh, some chances, yeah. No, he's not going to mate you. No, don't, don't worry. I want like some sort of stack and e5 and just, you know. Yes, yes, matic. but uh, it will not be easy. It's not good, yeah, like, you know. That's my problem. Not, not yet. Yeah. Whoa, what's he doing? He's, um, hmm? he's spending a lot of time here. Yeah, okay, just win him on time. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. He's gonna play queen h6. Uh, not but sure. I can get out. Queen h6 is coming. I'm yeah, okay. but that's a bit dangerous, I would say. Check, check. Oh, you're right. No, I'm done. Okay, I can't do that. Mm, that's, yeah. Uh, not so great. So try something like f3 and then king f2. Yeah, least. I have to run out. Yeah. Anyway, it's about time, you know. Okay, it doesn't matter. He's going to lose in time. Yeah, excellent. You see, now another card. You castle two, both ways in this game, yeah? Yeah, I did. No, no, no. I castled both ways. Uh-oh. That was bad. I was just trying no, to play no, fast. No, Okay. Touchdown. Ah, thank you. We did it. Mm -hmm. Together. Ready? Well, don't relax early, but... Uh, we did it. We won without castling, me and you. Yeah. Okay, good. You see. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you see, he, I told you he would be castled, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and I mouse slipped. I played queen f3 on move. I mean. Yeah, yeah. No, I think queen g4 was. Yeah, queen g4 is lights easy. out. Because knight e5, d5. I mean, knight e5, d5, knight e5, you can take and, and queen e6, Bishop, yes, or rook h7. So yeah, oh, rook h7, even mates. better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, or queen e6, yeah. I mean, I think that it's. I mean, queen g4 was almost finished. In the yeah, queen g4 yeah. was... Because I'm also threatening queen e6. That, was, that would have been... Rook h7 is threat, everything is threat. Yeah. I mean, that would have been a good example of, of no castle chess. That actually, you made it because you haven't castled, yeah? Yeah, well, and it worked out because he played right into a, uh, a position that no castles was natural, so... Um... Anyway, well, excuse yeah, my mouse. See, yeah, it, 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 seems, it seems that you had a big advantage that he, that he didn't know that you, that you will not castle. Yeah? <laughs> right. <laughs> <I did. laughs> no, but objectively, objectively talking, okay, of course, uh, then both players should, should agree that they don't castle. Because if one can castle and another cannot, it gives a too big advantage. Right. To, to well, especially if they know. But what is also good about this, uh, just the last thing, what is actually good about this idea of no castle is that you can play any even tournament game official tournament game like this because you what all you have to do is just to have a gentleman agreement with your opponent that you both don't castle and you play a game i mean you're tired let's say both of you are tired of theory and you play a tournament even top tournament you just agree okay we don't castle okay and then you play it it's i love that idea game, so. just a gentleman's agreement uh, why not yeah gentleman agreement and then you play no castle chess i mean within a uh, actually a uh, regular rated tournament it's also possible yeah well, uh, this has been amazing. Obviously, uh, you know the the article followed by all the all the the work you've been doing this month to kind of talk about the approach and your goals here. We really appreciate it. I, I don't even I don't really want this to end, but I know that uh, you've got you've got an evening to get to there with the family, and um, there's we've already we've already gotten a lot of your time. So Vladimir, I really appreciate this. This is a dream come true for me, and I, I appreciate talking about this. And maybe maybe at some point we will be holding a No Castles kind of event here on Chess.com. We'll get you back. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Good. So try it. I mean, all what I want to say, just try it. And then, then you see if you like it or not. But uh, I think the idea is interesting. I don't pretend for any more than that. But uh, uh, let's give it a try. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. And uh, Thank you so much. All the and, best and you, hear, you, hear, the, you heard the words. The you heard the man. Give it a try. An agreement with a friend. And uh, try No Castle Chess for yourself. So thank you, Vladimir. Have a, have a great night there. All the best. Bye. Bye. All right, and that was uh, world champion Vladimir Kronvik. That was amazing and awesome, and like I said, a dream come true for me. No, no jokes. And uh, I think he makes a lot of great points. And you know, especially I really, you know, when we got into it discussing the difference between No Castles Chess and Fisher Random, and I think some of the perception that uh, people have when they first look at Fisher Random in terms of not just how confusing it can be for beginners, but even for professionals. We saw uh, the best players in the world making blunders as early as move five. Right. And I think that, um, like he said, it's not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but it also can be kind of confusing. Right. Even for fans to feel like the best players in the world 
really don't know what's going on. And the nice thing about No Castles Chess is for the most part, the patterns in theory, and I would argue even the principles of king safety and central control don't go away without castles. So on that note, I'm gonna ask all of you to not go away. We're gonna take our very, very first break of this show today. Stateofchess.com continues. We got plenty ahead. Uh, obviously, this was an amazing highlight to have world champion Vladimir Kromnik with us, but we're gonna review chess.com, what it's been over the last few months. We got special guests. We got Carrie Fan, the CEO of Chess Kid joining us. We got Dan Vines, who's really the head developer and all that is chess.com's analysis tools and a lot of stuff that runs under the hood. So a very exciting state of chess.com show ahead for all of you. Don't go anywhere. I will be back with you all in just a few minutes. Hey, 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 welcome back, everybody. Stateofchess.com, December edition continues here. And uh, to remind you all of what this show is about, it's really your opportunity, uh, not just to get a little bit of a behind the scenes look of who is chess.com, what have we done over the last few months. Uh, we try to bring on different staff members, have different guests to give you some insight into the different faces and the different people working hard uh, to make chess.com and today chesskid.com, uh, all the things that it is. Obviously, we just had an amazing interview with world champion Vladimir Kromnik. We'll be, we'll be cutting that up and uh, getting that video out shared directly for those who may be joining late and want to see, hey, what did Kromnik have to say 
uh, we will have that interview shared on our, our different uh, platforms, so don't you worry. But uh, right now, we're going to dive right into what we normally do um, and uh, start talking about what's happened at chess.com over the last roughly quarter. This show is planned to be every quarter, so probably about four times a year. Um, and part of the show is also that not only are you kind of getting some insight and getting to know what's been happening behind the scenes, uh, but also your opportunity to sound off. Uh, I, we like to call these shows our own kind of AMA, right? I'm not, I'm not popping on Reddit right now with an AMA holding a little sign saying it's real, really me, Danny Wrench. Uh, but this is an AMA format in the sense that if you have a question, please ask it. Serious questions, hard-hitting questions. This is not a, uh, a show where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dodge things, okay? This is an opportunity uh, for you to really uh, get, your, get your voice heard, especially if it's, you know, appropriate and you're not just trolling uh, and you have, uh, you have some insight you'd like to be given into something, I'm going to do my best to, uh, to give it uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of how I can. And uh, so do that today. Sometimes people, I think, ask questions when we're doing things like a speed chess championship match or pro chess league. And as much as I'd like to dive in and I see an interesting question from chat or a criticism of chess.com, I don't always go into it, not because I don't see it, but because it's not the proper format. It's not the proper time or the platform. So if you have a question, and if you'd like to get your voice heard, please, uh, please do it and um, ask it. And our, our staff will be watching and they'll be feeding me, feeding me some questions throughout the day. So on that note, let's start diving in. So you can see there our amazing uh, little timeline of events here. We've already done the Kromnik interview. Let's talk a little bit about what we released in August. There were really, there were really two uh, major things that happened in August. And again, I'm going to grab this link real quick and I'm going to well, I guess, no, I won't. I'm going to ask staff to share it on, on, <laughs> in the different chat rooms, uh, no matter where you're watching in. So if you want to follow along, review the August article, you can. But the main two things we did in August, we released uh, multiple modes for Puzzle Rush, and then we also released Flare. Uh, there was a lot of other things that happened, a lot of behind-the-scenes support. Uh, we updated uh, different banners people can earn for their profile which is kind of cool, especially if you're a title player and, and a top blogger and a chess.com streamer, if you're a, you know, an accomplished member. Um, we did some behind the scenes stuff in regards to improving our Android and iOS support, which by the way, fast forward ahead, quick, quick Quentin Tarantino, I can tell you that we have now released Android finally. This is looking back at August, but Android is now live to I think roughly 10% of its users right now. We are continuing to push it out, which means Puzzle Rush, Puzzle Battle, and everything is coming to Android. So if you're an Android user, hallelujah, right? It's been a long time. I think the last State of Chess.com I did, I couldn't even answer you directly. But if you're not using Flare, you're one of the few that's not. So many people have Flare. They love it. They, uh, they, they change their regular icon with some sort of smiley face or pro chess league team logo. It's been a lot of fun. Um, the, uh, the Flare, as we said, you can do that by just going to your profile and pretty much clicking on your own little settings icon and uh, grabbing any flare you want. So the unicorn, a surprisingly popular flare, I don't know why. Just, you know, throwing that out there. Don't know why, but there you go. Um, and like I said, the other main feature we did was the different time zones. I'm curious right now, I'm gonna take a quick stock and see if people in chat, how many people have ever done survival mode? Um, it, it's been surprisingly popular in the sense that uh, more people gave it a try right away and then i think over time it kind of faded because one of the things we all love about three minute and five minute puzzle rush is it's the perfect call it the uh the wife is in the other room mode right you've got three minutes before your kids come and bother you mode that's three minute right five minutes of doing something else i'm not going to mention maybe mode is puzzle rush mode right but survival mode is kind of a tough one because the whole point of it is you just go until you get three strikes and um, as awesome as that is, like the first couple of times I broke my three minute and five minute record with survival and then I kind of got tired of the fact that I was still going. So I don't know. I'm curious how many people do survival mode. Um, crazy coffee man saying he loves the unicorn. It's great. But anyway, I'm just curious about that. Um, that's kind of been a fun, big thing that we did here. Um, so, um, so yeah, let me know. I'm watching different chat rooms here. Uh, like I said, let me go back here to August, see what else we got. What else did we do? Yeah, so we made a lot of progress toward the site-wide chat feature, which actually is something I'm going to get into in the September one. Uh, but for those of you who don't use site-wide chat, maybe actually I'm going to give you a quick preview and kind of show you how it works. Um, so if you want to do site-wide chat, I'm pretty sure all you have to do is go to chat 
And there I actually have a chat room already with uh, three of the uh, major kind of managers here at chess.com. That's Eric, our CEO, Brennan, our COO, and uh, Dallin, our chief of, uh, chief of design, chief product. I'm not going to show you what we've been discussing in that DM because it's not totally appropriate. <laughs> but I am, I am going to start a new chat with my producer here. Let's see, are you on chess.com, Arn, right now? Studio Chess 1. Okay. Oh, you're a Studio Chess 1? Okay, so let me close that out. Let me let me start a new chat here. We're going to do Studio Chess 1. Oops. The whole point is I don't think a lot of people know that you can um, that you can you can basically chat from everywhere and the chat stays with you no matter what. The chat stays with you no matter what and uh, it actually will go with you to any scene you want and you can add people to it. So let's see. That's one. I'm going to do also, let's see, is Nick Barton around? Let's try to do a chat here with the two of us, three of us. Yeah, this will be fun. Oh, look, you can't even see it. Hey. I don't think I can. Yeah, no, don't worry about it. Let's go. Let's come back to the, the, main, the main August. But, okay, we're going to come back to uh, the site-wide chat here in a little bit. Because it did, it did uh, get announced in September. We'll get that set up uh, and uh, show you how it works. So for those of you that don't use it, you can. Um, I don't know. I'm not a huge site-wide chatter, guyer. That's the truth. Uh, but um, some people, I think, have really, have really liked it. Kind of, it's. I guess the most comparable thing is Facebook, right? You log into Facebook and the chat is there, and no matter where you go on Facebook, the chat stays with you. So that's kind of the idea um, of what we're going for. Um, Full disclosure, it's also built on the same sort of uh, server network that our Puzzle Battles is, which is technology that we're really pushing um, to handle heavy bandwidth because it, it may be the future technology of our live chess server, which is obviously the most important thing. Everybody logs onto chess.com pretty much to play Blitz games, Blitz and Bullet. Um, so the, the, the technology that powers site-wide chat and powers Puzzle Battles is likely the we're, we're kind of testing it as the future uh, integrated technology for all of our major live offerings and basically the biggest one being live chess and so there's a, obviously a lot of importance put on that um, and uh, with three and a half million games played every day there better be um, and we're pretty happy with it um, there's a lot of reasons why we we're, we're going with the tech we are but uh, that's just kind of a, a random a random note um, all right well let's um I, do we have Carrie waiting are we ready Okay, so we're going to take a very, very quick break because when we come back, we're going to have Carrie with us. As I said, Carrie Fan is the CEO of ChessKid.com. We're going to touch base on some of the stuff going on there. And uh, like I said, if you have questions, keep asking them. Even if I haven't answered them yet, uh, we will get to them. Moderators and our staff are, are watching and we'll, we'll deliver some of the better ones. So keep them coming. When we come right back, we're going to have Carrie Fan, the CEO of ChessKid, and the state of chess.com continues.
And we're back now with the state of chess.com. Want to fix our, our gaffe that we had as we went off air. We tried to start some global chat. A couple of my teammates came to the rescue. We can see a global chat that was started with Nick and Rakesh. And the main point is that no matter where you go on the site, I navigate away to forums or whatever, the chat stays with you. And the cool thing is that when you start a new chat, so let's say I want to start a new chat. If you type the username of someone, it auto populates and tells you what usernames we have that are like that. In fact, find someone like Carrie Fan, our CEO of Chess Kid. So I, I start that chat with him and say, hey, Carrie. And we'll see if that starts a chat with Carrie on chess.com. And uh, I think we're going to have Carrie joining us in just a second. He says, hey, Danny, I'll say, hey, Carrie, are you ready to come on the show? <laughs> Well, that's amazing. All right. Well, why didn't you say so? Let's welcome Carrie Fan, the CEO of Chess Kid. All right, Carrie. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Doing well. How about you? Good. Uh, so, we um, like like I said, I've let let everyone know this show is is really about giving people an inside look at at uh, the state of affairs at Chess.com. We we go through developments and things we've been doing, but we also bring on different people and let them talk about what they do at, chess, at chess.com and in your case, Chess Kid. So first I want to say, so tell me when, when I, when I interviewed you and we, before we brought you on to be the CEO of Chess Kid, you said that something like this would be like a dream job for you. Now that you've been at Chess Kid running the ship for a few years, do you still feel like running Chess Kid is like a dream job for you? Remember, there's only thousands of people watching. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. That's an interesting question. I'll say the answer is yes. Now, I came from a startup background where for the last 20 years, I've actually been the one who started my own company. But this is the first one where I was so excited to join the company just because it really merges something that I love, which is family, chess, kids. It brings all of my passions together in one. So I couldn't have asked for a better setup with chess kid and, and you have two boys that they're they're roughly the same age and and they play chess here and there right they dabble or are they or are they getting more serious they dabble on chess kid uh kaden is kind of like my product tester and he solves puzzles every night that's probably his favorite feature of chess kid yep and jordan goes through lessons with me from time to time but he also loves to do other things like play Minecraft and, you know, other 10 year old activities. Other, other 10 year old. Yeah. I, I know that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the, uh, the chess kid team is, is super busy. I think a lot of people obviously on chess.com naturally don't always know what's going on at chess kid, but I think that to share a little bit about, uh, how, how far chess kid has come, let me, let me just let you kind of take the reins of, of, what are you most excited about Chess Kid's been doing right now? And, and what, are, what are some things you'd like people to know about, about where Chess Kid is at? Thanks for giving me that chance, Danny. <clears throat> Chess Kid is doing so many exciting things. Uh, we've had a bunch of activities. One of the activities that you started out with, for example, uh, was the Hour of Chess. Right. And that has only grown over time. Uh, last year, we had 90-something schools. This year, we had 150 schools participate. Next year, I have no doubt we're going to have more than 200 schools participate. We have a huge partnership with Vishy Anand, a five-time world champion who everybody knows. Uh, Vishy has agreed to be the chief chess mentor of India. So Fun Master Mike and I took a trek down to India to discuss uh, our official launch into how we're going to build Chess Kid in India. And over and above India, we're doing a lot of international work with translations. We are releasing our first dubbed videos. So a lot of you will know, a lot of Chess Kid members will know Fun Master Mike as the voice of Chess Kid. But we're releasing Spanish dubbed videos for the first time. And those videos are voiced by uh, women's international master Yvette Garcia in mm -hmm. Spanish. So we have a female voice for the first time, and that's really exciting. And we're also going to be unveiling a whole facelift for Chess Kid in the next couple of weeks. That's super exciting. And you guys were actually the first ones 
you know, and, you know, doing running the companies together, we know that sometimes, you know, Chess Kid borrows things from chess.com, but most of the time it's been that way naturally because Chess Kid was, you know, like the child of chess.com, right? And so when we first pushed it out and launched in 2010, I remember that was kind of our tagline. It was like, hey, we now have Chess Kid, we've stripped social networking, and it's safe. And that was pretty much it, right? But as Chess Kid has done certain things, I think that the innovation has come back the other way. Some of the things that I think people don't know that Chess Kid does is is the report cards, some of the things that they have that help teachers and and, and parents, like right. not only get not be able to monitor if we're talking like babysit, did your kid do their chess, but actually be able to get insights into the type of things they're doing, you know, where, you know, the type of tactics they solve in terms of whether they struggle with pins and all this kind of stuff. So I love the report card feature. I know I'm a little bit old school. I just want to say that. Um, but also the puzzle duels you guys did was, was really the first thing that led to, it was really the first puzzle battles that we ever had on the site with the ability for people to throw down in a game, in a match, where they're solving puzzles rather than playing chess. So that's actually that's actually pretty cool. I, I brought up the hour of chess thing. I wanted to show that a little bit, um, if I could, because I think that on online in this community, a lot of people know that, uh, you know, okay, I think online in the tech communities, a lot of people maybe are developers, they code. Um, so they maybe have even heard of the hour of code, which is actually something that uh, we're, there we go. Um, the hour, the hour of, of chess is not necessarily something we took from the hour of code, but it is something that is very uh, has been very popular where basically all the schools that are involved in chess kit around the world, um, you know, play chess for an hour. And I think that this is actually something that's really cool for people to get in, to get their schools involved and get their kids involved in if they haven't, because sometimes uh, we need an excuse, I guess, as far as everybody kind of rallying around a certain thing and, you um, Anyway, I just I feel like the Hour of Chess is one of the regular annual initiatives we do that is that is really underappreciated. I, I agree with you, Danny. And one thing that we're doing um, this year is we had live tournaments that were scheduled for Hour of Chess, so we made it easier for kids to get into Chess Kid once they joined the site. We have a contest every year where uh, educators and administrators can take pictures of their kids actually playing chess doing something Chess Kid related. And we have a contest that we run where basically staff members vote on the best pictures and the winners of that contest will get complimentary Chess Kid Gold memberships. So you're absolutely right. With all these initiatives, you mentioned the report cards. The report cards are great. One other key feature that we released earlier this year is called Classroom Planner. Now, what is okay. Classroom Planner? And that was... That is actually a step-by-step, week-by-week guide for the non-chess playing teacher to teach their kids how to play chess. So one of the great strengths of Chess Kid, but also kind of one of our weaknesses, we have so much data, so many features, and it's kind of, it can be kind of daunting for somebody who doesn't know chess to jump onto the site and learn how to use the site to the best of their abilities. So we decided to put everything together and put together a step-by-step -step plan of action for teachers and coaches to start from the very basics, like how to move a queen, how to move a rook, and going all the way up through 30 weeks of lessons to the point where they are not only ready to play, play a full game of chess, they are almost tournament ready, they're confident, they've learned a lot of the ins and outs of chess. It's exciting. I wanted to read a, a comment from chat. I'm going to summarize it because it came up earlier and I don't have it in front of me now. But he said he has about 70 kids using chesskid.com, um, uses everything. So that's awesome. And, and thanks for doing that. But he wants to know about an analysis board for doing lessons directly on Chess Kid versus an analysis board like they have on chess.com. Any thoughts about that? Analysis boards, that's in the works. So we're working with a gentleman from the chess.com side, Dan. Uh, who I think you're going to be talking to later, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Yeah, I know that guy. Yeah. So uh, in order to get to analysis boards, we have to do a lot of back-end work to make it happen. And we're very excited to be releasing a new version of live chess. And once that's ready, we'll be able to start formal work on analysis boards. So that's definitely uh, on our roadmap for product. We're probably also going to add analysis boards 
to our classroom planner so that teachers can actually bring up diagrams of specific positions right from the classroom planner. So right. there's a whole bunch of great stuff that's in the works. As we see King's Bishop saying in the chat, clarifying, yeah. So adults and parents can also use Chess Kid. Now, their main goal, if you will, is to be a shepherd. Obviously, we encourage adults, if they're playing chess online, to do so on chess.com. But a lot of coaches and parents play with their kids on Chess Kid, right? Talk a little bit about that. How many, how many active teachers and parents who maybe weren't into chess before play regularly on Chess Kid? Well, we have probably thousands of adults, but earlier this year, Danny, we've actually passed over a million users for Chess Kid, so that was kind of a milestone, uh, an exciting marker point for us. Yep. So we're really happy about that. And yeah, you're right, adults can play on Chess Kid, but we keep it extremely safe. There's absolutely no freeform chat between adults and kids. But it, you know, the funny thing is, one of the adults that I talked to, she's actually the, the leader at um, my kids' after school programs. And she said she needs to keep her brain sharp. And I gave her a, a demo chess kid membership. She uses it every day. She's already at king levels. It's amazing. So she's using chess kid to keep her own mind fresh. And it's just one of the many dozens of stories that I've heard about other adults who use chess kid to keep yeah. them to keep things fun. Pretty fun. I, speaking of something fun, I want to kind of preview uh, we something we have planned for next year. I know that you've got versions of this you're you're announcing beforehand, but uh, we had Chess Kid as the main sponsor this year for the Junior Speed Chess Championship. But next year, we're actually planning on having a Chess Kid, an under-12 Junior Speed Chess Championship, right? So for those of you who tuned in and, and like seeing Ali Reza Farouja and uh, Jordan Von Fereist and all the world's top juniors, Aryan Chari, I don't remember who, Wei Yi won it, right? I mean, hardly, hardly remember these days. But it was pretty awesome. But next year, we're going to do an event of globally this isn't just us we're going to have the world's best chess players around the world under the age of 12 competing in the first ever chess kid speed chess championship so uh do we have a date for when that launches yet or, or not yet mike is working on that mike's working on that uh, but just to tease that we are actually having the india speed chess championship the official event launching on january 15th so that one is uh, we're partnering up with vishy anand and with schools around india to have that event, it's going to be really exciting. We expect a very strong turnout and a bunch of very strong players to attend. Uh, the internet, the worldwide speed chess championship. Yeah, we're still working out the details with Mike. Uh, answering the question of Nicola D. A drummer, uh, there is no next SCC command right now because we do not have the next speed chess championship officially scheduled. We're working on that. With all the players, so the, sorry, randomchess.com answer there, but that's why yeah, the, the command isn't broken. We're scheduling it between Hikaru Nakamura, Yanda Pamiyashi, and all those playing. But yeah, so when does the, so the India Speech is Champion, now will that be, that's just for juniors in India? It's just for juniors. It, the first event is scheduled to start on January 15th. Okay. We will have uh, a bunch of practice tournaments that will lead up to the event so that our brand new Indian audience can get used to playing on the site and yeah. get used to experimenting with a bunch of the different features that Chess Kid has to offer. Now, last thing here before we before we kind of wrap it up, I want to say that we recently launched the ChessKid.com official club, and yeah. we started a uh, a daily chess tournament, which people can join my invitation. I'm going to be playing in that tournament. Carrie, tell everybody. Uh, one thing I love sharing about our team is how many uh, true chess lovers we have, right? Sometimes I think people think like, oh, it's just a business and then some random idiot who's not that good at chess anyway named Danny, right? No, I mean, no, we actually have a lot of really not only people that love chess, but people that are trying to get better on their own time. And I want to tell people, you can go join the club. But Carrie, uh, let me tell a funny story about Carrie. One of the first ever uh, meetups we went to was a, a manager's meetup. And I caught Carrie kind of alone. We had just had a whole bunch of meetings in a boardroom, and Carrie was alone at the pool, kind of watching on the iPad. And I came over and saw what he was watching, and he was watching a replay of the Speed Chess Championship. <laughs> um, and uh, and so, Carrie, how good of a chess player are you? Tell everybody your chess rating and a little bit of your background, just in terms of how much you love chess and how you got into chess. 
Well, my dad actually taught me when I was nine years old, but I never really got into chess seriously until I was 16 or 17. And you're right, Danny, I am a huge chess fanboy. Um, I can't help it. I am not a strong player by any means, but I'm in the 16, 1700 over the board range. Uh, but I, I'm kind of addicted to chess.com and have been for the greater part of 10 years. So it's, it's just a huge passion and going back full circle to why this is the perfect job for me. Cause I love games, but chess is the love game of my life. I can't say it any better than that. It truly is the game I love the most. Well, um, you're not alone. Obviously, there's a lot of people here watching it that feel the same way or they or they wouldn't be here, right? We hope not. We hope you like chess. I don't know why else you're here, but I just shared a link to the official Chess Kid Club in Chess TV chat. Uh, give it a give it a click if you're watching. Um, if any uh, any staff or mods mind grabbing that link and sharing it in the other other chat platforms across the web, uh, we'd appreciate that. So yeah, give give the official Chess Kid Club a join. Um, Go to chesskid.com today if, if, uh, if you already have kids or nieces, nephews, or anybody that you think might be interested in, uh, in getting involved on, on Chess Kid, you can do that. But even if you're not interested in that, join the official club. You can play in a daily chess tournament that I'll be playing in um, and stay in touch with other Chess Kid news. So, Kerry, anything else before I let you go? Well, thanks a lot, Danny. Yeah, please join the Chess Kid Club. It's one of the fastest growing clubs on chess.com. We have regular people in there who are providing feedback, updates on news and events, and we'd really love your support. Awesome. Thanks, Danny. We appreciate the time. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Enjoy, enjoy the day there, and we'll, uh, we'll catch up soon. Okay. Take care. Bye, Gary. Bye. And there was our, our CEO of Cheska. He, he's, uh, he really is an awesome guy. And for those, for those of you, the stories I was telling about uh, watching him watch the Speed Chess Championship, it's not made up. He watched a lot of it. So he, you know, he was by the pool at the beach. We're trying to have a, a meetup and, and, and get some time. And he was uh, busy watching chess when he wasn't in the, in, the, uh, in the meeting. So anyway, he's doing a great job over there. If you haven't joined the official Chess Kid Club, please do. We see links being shared everywhere. Um, you may be tuning in, and uh, I don't know if we have a, a direct link to the official tournament. I was looking for it in the club. Um, I should probably know because I'm playing in the tournament, but I was just told I was playing in the tournament by Nick, okay? I do what I'm told around here, um, so I actually don't have a direct link <laughs> to the tournament, but um, if we can get that direct link, maybe we can share it because I think a lot of people watching right now might just, I mean, it's, a, it's going to be a tournament we're going to be playing uh, with, some, with some prizes. There's going to be some premium membership prizes. Um, I believe there's even going to be some chess kid kind of club in the uh, ch chess club in a box kind of prizes. One of the things that Carrie didn't share, which I will, um, which is that chess kid does a really good job providing those starter packs. Like he said, there's the lesson planner that helps teachers who may know nothing about chess run a chess club. But we also have what's basically like you can sign up and get chess club in a box everything you would need to start a chess club uh, gets provided whether it's the physical chess boards materials the written curriculum we have um, and then of course memberships uh, for the kids to play online I guess we don't provide computers or iPads necessarily but pretty much everything else you need to run an active and modern day chess club um, with this chess club in a box thing so seriously uh, we know that it's obviously us promoting our own I can't even say sister company, our own child company. Uh, Chess Kid was something we launched in 2010. Um, not long after I first kind of became like really, really full time um, here at chess.com. So gosh, that's 10, 11, wow, many years, many moons ago. Um, but um, anyway, where's that? Where's the link? There we go. We've got a link there. Chess Win just shared it. Thank you so much. I'm going to click it if someone can share it in the Chess TV chat. Um, because uh, I want to know who's playing in the tournament that I'm playing in. There it is. Shout out to uh, BJH for sharing that link there. And uh, there we go. So how many players we have in it? We've got... I need to know how to... Oh, we've got 1,700 players already signed up. That's pretty good. And uh, there you go. So... Anyway, let's take a very quick break. When I, we come back, apparently we're going to have... Uh, oh, wait, no. We're reviewing September right now. Or you got to tell me what we're doing. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the state of chess.com. We are now going to review September. Let's do it.
looking, looking for September. <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay. This is fun. This is really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nope. That did not work. I got September. Hey, everybody. Uh, the state of chess.com, we continue to roll through different things that we're bringing to you over the last quarter. Uh, like I said, September was uh, really the biggest thing that happened in September, you can see right away, was Puzzle Battle, right? Puzzle Battles is where it's at. It was our uh, first ever live, I, I keep wanting to say game, but that doesn't work. It's a live match where you solve puzzles, right? Rather than play chess games. And um, it's, it's it's been awesome. I mean, I'm actually regularly surprised and a little disturbed by how many puzzle battles are being solved by certain people. Let's go over there right now. Let's let's head over to puzzle battles real quick and just see what the leaderboard is. Cuz it is bananas, right? We've got these guys. The, the thing that was really huge about uh puzzle battles, I'm going to play a battle. I'm sorry. I know you weren't set up for that, but I don't really care because I'm addicted. I'm addicted to puzzle battles. Um, the thing that about puzzle battles that's crazy awesome is that now that we've kind of fixed the database, you you just I rarely get puzzles. I really I rarely ever get sessions anymore where I'm where I'm solving puzzles. I've uh, I've already seen, meaning. Like, it's like truly great for your chess. No longer, no longer sometimes just memorization, which is something we had, and we'll get into that a little bit with the Puzzle Rush update and reset that we did. I know uh, that's going to be a topic we're going to discuss today. Um, but I think that there was, a, there was a period where part of being good at it was just being fast with the mouse and then having... Uh, having um, a good memory, basically memorizing the position. Like every, I mean, you can tell by the way I'm moving. I mean, partly people, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm slower than some named like Ray Robson, etc. But every one of these puzzles is new to me. Oh, I can already claim a win. Look at that. I'll just claim a win because we're doing a show here. But I want to go back to the leaderboard. Let's see here. So let's go back to the puzzles leaderboard here. This is This is something I wanted to show right here. Just like... Look at look at this. One of the things that Puzzle Battles did was it it launched our first ever seasonal kind of system. And you can't quite see it, but if you go to Puzzle Battles, you can see guys like Ray Robson. That is a that is a grandmaster of 2650 plus status who pretty much makes Puzzle Battles his job, right? I mean, this guy solves more Puzzle Battles, and then you've got people above him. This guy 2012 VA champ, rocking the Amon Hamilton flair by the way. Shout out to that. This guy is regularly at top of the leaderboard now. Now, I can't get into too much of what the future is of seasonality on chess.com, but I will say that we have we have big goals to just continue to make everything you do on chess.com more fun. And people like being rewarded and acknowledged for the activities that they do and, and uh, their, the goals that they achieve. And obviously, if you're getting better at chess, it's its own reward. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that before, Dad, right? But besides getting better at chess, the, season, the seasonal goal is something that we plan to do in regards to a lot of the different features we have, tying them in in a way that um, rewards users and isn't just about the symbolic, hey, Ray Robson has 54,000 season points right now in December but may actually have some monetary value. And again, I can't say too much more about that because I don't want to reveal too much of the, the secret sauce, but I will say in 2020, expect big things in regards to, you see what we're doing with Arena Kings, where people are rewarded and given cash, money, homie, 
Cash Money Homie for playing chess on our site and streaming it. We have big goals for, for the seasonal um, activities that you do to reward you, not just the overall and best players, but within your own rating bracket, within your group. And so if you're looking for more reasons to uh, get to know all the different features and, and have, uh, have reasons to play and solve things on chess.com, they're coming at you real soon. So, uh, yeah, so Puzzle Battles, that was a big thing in September. Let's go back to, did I already lose September again? What is wrong with me? It's because I navigated away from it. What is wrong with me? Let's go uh, back to September. Okay, we're good. Whew. Okay, so back to September. Um, so we launched Puzzle Battles. That was huge. Uh, like I said, uh, we, we really pushed out site-wide chat. Um, and... Uh, I, I already kind of featured that um, when I brought up the different chat rooms, right? We had Carrie here, and and I had Rakesh, who, by the way, was featured in some of those some of those photos um, that you saw with uh, with Vichy and Non. Um, but uh, the site wide chat is uh, explained in this article here. If anyone wants to grab it and share it for our different respective chat rooms, uh, the main thing, like we said, it, it's in beta. It's actually still officially in beta, and I like saying that when. There may be bugs. I should just say that about everything. No, I'm kidding. Um, Sidewide Chat is still in beta because, like I said, it's built on a completely different live server technology, but it seems to be pretty stable. And and for those of you that are big chatters, not me, okay, but if you're a big Facebook chatter, I know people that live on Facebook and just have multiple chats going all the time, right? They're called Z, Generation Z. They're okay, Zoomer, right? Those are these people we're dealing with. What is wrong with those people, by the way? who are just doing nothing but internet chatting all day. He's ignoring me today. We're going to continue. Okay. Um, anyway, do site-wide chat if you're into that. Um, and uh, get as many awkward conversations going as you can at once. And then have them have them go with you everywhere on the site to distract you from what you're really here to do, which is play chess. I'm not giving a very good um, thumbs up for this, am I? But okay, there you go. <laughs> Uh, you know, I can take over if, yeah, you, uh, if you need a break. <laughs> you might need to mute me here. All right, we got a great comment from chat. Kings Bishop says, hey, Danny, speaking of rewards, the achievements are pretty neat. That's right. You know what else is neat? Nature. Nature's neat. Anyway, um, anybody who gets that reference gets a diamond membership. Tweet me the video first. Um, nature's neat. Achievements are neat. But who do we talk to if some of them don't seem to work? We've watched a tons of TV, but it does not look like it's registering. Um, it, that I'm getting a couch potato. So, so King's Bishop wants to get the couch potato and TV junkie reward. Um, the best way to do that is to submit a bug report with the user snap. Okay, I know I've said this before, but that little question mark bubble in the nav that everybody has is a real thing, and it goes directly to our heads of product at our site, and they take action on it. So we're still a very, very small company, um, very flat company. Some would argue too much so, uh, but that little user snap gives you a direct voice to the CEO of chess.com. I'm not kidding. Eric lives in Jira, and all he does is answer tickets. I'm like, Eric, do something else. And he's like, no, dude, I'm doing tickets. Like, Eric, do something else. I hope he's watching right now. Go do something else, Eric. Stop watching. Um, but no, I'm not kidding. If you If you're not making feature requests or reporting bugs via the, via the little user snap icon, it's a you problem. Okay, because it does go directly to people. That's not a joke. So use it. All right. Um, with that, I think we have officially have reached our next breaking point because when we come back, we're breaking bad with Dan V. I'm definitely reaching my breaking point. <laughs> you reached that years ago. You just be quiet. All right, we'll be right back with Dan V and more analysis.
And we are back with the stateofchess.com show. I am now joined by a man, a myth, a legend. His name is Dan Vines. He is, first of all, you know you're one of my favorite people. Like, you know that, right? Because you that's regularly you, use it against that's me. That's what you say. Um, I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it? Okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay. Well, Dan, tell, tell everybody how you got involved at chess.com. Because, you know, I discovered your site first, and then Eric approached you. He took credit for hiring you like he does with everything around here. Okay? But <clears throat> I saw what you were doing first. So tell everybody a little bit about your history and how you got accidentally involved. And by the way, have you read any of those books behind you? Yes, as you can see somewhere over here um <laughs> half of those are harry potter books my wife said yeah you have a lot half, of different editions of harry potter right the other half are uh you know the typical chess player issue where you just keep buying books right so um that's what that is I isn't, that, isn't that a thing that chess players have where you keep buying books thinking that's the cure like that's the problem is i just needed a book on the closed variation of the Sicilian that I don't play by a guy who shouldn't even be writing books. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of classics. There's like six or so I would actually read that right. I probably have read. And then the other ones are you just pick up. You're like, oh, this is sweet. This is a good intro. And right. then you get it, and it just looks cool. But you're, you're like a 1,600 rated chess player, right? I mean, you're... Excuse me. I'm 1,800? Oh, eight... Okay, wow. Now we're Now I'm really in hot water here. I just, this interview did not start well for me. Um, I, have about, I have about a point, a ELO point of book, pretty much. An ELO point of book, yeah. So, again, tell everybody, so tell the story. How did you get involved with chess.com? And then I'll tell my version. Um, okay. Um, I made a chess website, chessply.com, because I wanted to practice openings against myself and yep. not have to RDP into a, another machine to use something from like the early nineties. Um, so, and then I put it on Reddit and people used it and uh, either you or Eric uh, got it. That's me. And, then, and like, two that was seconds, back when I still read Reddit before everybody yeah. there hated me. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah that's a separate issue. Yeah. Um, we'll I go into I that. <laughs> okay. 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 That's kind of a disease for me. Um, <laughs> But, um, yeah, in like two seconds, one of you guys were on there and emailing me. And then it was like, it was awesome. Oh, we're talking. We're talking about how we're going to change the world and dreams are right. changing. And then you went dark for like a month and went to a meetup uh, in uh, uh, Mexico or something. And yeah. I hadn't heard anything. Yeah. That was our and first then, year in, in Cancun. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So it took about a month or two of emails. And then we're like, okay, let's make it. Let, let, let's jam on that. Um, and then I got hired, and then I started doing about like thirty other things, um, and, and slowly starting to get back to the the original inspiration. Of that. Yeah. Well, and we won't we won't get into that too much because Eric would be mad at us if we revealed too much of that uh -huh. secret project. Are we even allowed to say the name? Let's not even do it. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. The original reason we we brought on Dan V hasn't been anything that he's worked on, which is, so, like, every few months, and you know this, I email Eric, oh. like, every few months I get frustrated, and I email Eric, like, why isn't this project started? I want to work with Dan V. Stop hogging him. And Eric says, he's working on analysis. Leave us alone. And that's it. Yeah. That's, how, that's how that ends the discussion. Well, if you remember, one of our first things together, we were exchanging PGN databases, like, yeah. like little pen pals. Yep. To, to, to update our database but yeah that was uh, a new development recently we don't i no longer need you for that i know because um, you've done you've done a lot of automated work can we share that is that public is that live it's been rocking for a couple of weeks okay um, cool so so before we get to analysis which is obviously people can see the update here if you're just joining us welcome to the state of chess.com this is my man dan b seriously though one of our most talented developers i'm not just saying that and there's a reason why you describe someone's role sometimes as they're not doing the job you hired them for that's because he's really good and does a lot of other things that we've needed in the meantime so uh dan wouldn't say that so i get to say it dan is awesome he's also a huge chess fan you went to the pro chess league finals this year i know i'm all over the place but that's part of yeah. my show tell me how the pro chess league finals was first before we go on 
Um, that was exciting, a different a different vibe from the usual chess. You um, had a little too much to drink the last dinner. Can I tell you that is. now? I mean, that's um, I'm from <laughs> I'm from the New Orleans area, okay. so that just goes with with the events. But you um, you liked it, right? It was a good time, the PCL finals. Yeah. Yeah, it was neat. Um, the t-shirt gun was a new wrinkle, literally, and you know, in a funny way. And um, it was it was exciting. The uh, one observation, though, I'd like to say, I thought you know, going to chess tournaments. Maybe this is a United States thing. Yeah. Um, if you can afford to go to a Twitch event and a PCL finals, you can afford deodorant, right? <laughs> so. Um, walking, in, walking in, walking into that room was uh, a familiar, like, oh, I'm at a chess event. I'm at a chess tournament hey, in the dude, States. Yeah. We all feel that way. Let me tell you, I remember the first time facing off against a grandmaster in Russia where we're both focused and there are several flies dropping on his sweaty head and he doesn't even know it. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, it can happen. Sometimes people need um, body hygiene advice, and, that, and Dan V's here to give it. Um, we're going to dive yeah, yeah. into all the things he's doing here. I, I brought up chessply.com because a lot of people are still showing it. Um, if we want to show Dan's little Dan's little face there on chessply, it's adorable. You can't really see it, but you can go to chessply. Now, again, um, anybody who kind of does the math in terms of what chessply does and maybe some other resources on the web, you might have some idea of – the features that we're working on um, this little secret project we referred to a few times but I'll tell you it's more than that oh it's much more than chessply.com it's much oh. more are well, you ready in a world cool. where Dan V finally gets to work with Danny and Eric is out of the picture what will yeah. they create what can we I'm do sure. together Waiting for Danny to stop go ahead okay uh, I'm sure uh, <laughs> there's a, I'm sure there's a bunch of uh, DMs I have uh, when I get off of this, but yeah. you know, chess ply, that was a, a side thing I did and, um, I hadn't touched it in years and I know it aggravates a lot of core people. Um, but sorry. So it's just sitting there. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So tell so take me, where can I go on the site to help people appreciate what you're about to tell us you've done as far as the automated way to keep our databases up to date and serving our users, where should I go to make them happy about that? Um, just the master games area. We, um, you know, with, with, with the, with the hookups from, uh, chess bomb, our, our buddies over there, yep. um, we now get our games straight from them. Um, so I'm so at like the, the explorer. Is that the best place? Hey, uh, that's a good spot. Cause a lot of people go there to get their statistics on what they want to play and everything. And if you go to slash games where the masters, uh, are highlighted, um, so let's see. Are, so I'll go to I'll go to Explorer, yeah. and I'll go to the Master Games. Um, no, yeah, that just changes the feed of the positions there. If you if you go to, I'll, I'm just gonna make a few moves yeah, for yeah. like a main. We'll go with the Scotch, the best opening in the world, also best drink in the world. But okay, so now we're in like a Master Games thing, and we can click view all games from current position. Anybody can do this. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, you know, you know, it's bad when you're trying to decide your opening and you're like, you know, that's a good drink. Oh, yeah. No, that's that is. Well, that's how I decided it. I was 16. So you do the math. Um, <sighs> but OK, so the main thing is obviously we know there's a big there's a big future and a big demand for people that want to go over top level games and have them updated instantly. Uh -huh. And and so our main goal, this has been I'll just share it openly. That's what we do. Transparent sharing on this show. You know, it's been a neglected area of ours right i mean we you I, i've been doing it manually this has been literally dan v and danny duct taping our way to keeping a database halfway decent for the last several years right um yeah and i've gotten help from alex jermolinski and other i mean we, we've done our own like kind of manual curations of of the database integrity that we have and i think there are lots of better ways to do it and we are now really putting resources in but we can say that the future of our goals for providing tools that will be useful even for like professionals like title players think like chess base right ways to make this online database not only instantly up to date but allow you to gather games save them sort them build your own databases 
Um, this is a big part of our goal in future here. Um, and so you're saying keeping this thing up to date instantly was a big part of that. And now is it done already? Um, it's been going for maybe a week now. So I don't um, need to gather games anymore manually with Uncle Yermo? No, I've just been ignoring that calendar event. Well, um, when were you going to give me that memo? <laughs> hey, if it, whatever. You enjoy so, that I just waste my time doing that? Um, so I also have about 4 million games locally I'm processing to kind of backfill the gaps that we missed. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be happening soon now that we kind of have new games as they end going forward from today on uh, being processed. We need to backfill all the stuff we missed. So okay, cool. That's happening. So when will we be able to enter our own games from tournaments on chess.com, like enter an over-the-board PGN game? Now, I know we can already do that. Let's go to chess.com analysis, right? Yeah. So I could come here right now, and I can enter, like, I played this game, you know, and then I do things, and I enter, and I comment and say, like, hey, like, Dan B can't read what I'm typing true and i save it right and once i save it i get a unique url that i can give to anybody anywhere right uh -huh. let me go do that i'm gonna go i'm gonna i'm gonna throw a little curveball to my producer and give that link to the chess tv chat anyone can use that in other chat rooms if they want if i can find the tab i just had open that'd be sweet as well there we go so uh, yeah, you can you can click that link and and come to the analysis that I just created. So that's cool. You can enter any game and save any information and work you do with anybody globally. What else can you do? Um, well, yeah, I've always been a fan of the I call it the over the board type, the OTB type, where you just paste in your PGN, you can get a game report on it and all that stuff. Right. Uh, the part the part that's missing is kind of a nice way to kind of categorize all that and you know highlight it in your own little right cluster world. of stuff that's what we're working so, on yeah that, that's that's uh in the works okay so let's do let's do an analysis game report of the game that i just played without castling what do you think i had it i got it right here mm -hmm. can you see it uh, yeah i just beat this guy by the way, with making a pre-move blunder, you can see it's red. I played queen f3 as a pre-move uh -huh. with Kromnik well, watching me. Yeah. Um, that was disgusting uh, that I did that. Yeah, that was pretty good. I saw you trying to stall a little bit to just kind of see what he would say. What are you talking yeah. about? I, I, noticed, I noticed a lot of hovers when he was doing a lot of ums. That's because uh, I was being respectful of his time. It has nothing to do with me wanting a world champion's advice while I'm playing chess. <laughs> okay. You know what we should really get rid of? The on passant. Forget about castle. Let's just get rid of on passant. That'll cut down like 90% of the user submitted bugs. <laughs> it's actually true. Oh, <laughs> man. Uh, okay, so take us through what people can learn from analysis. So this is what the main feature looks like. So you go to an analysis, you've got your game report. So how do you uh, read the game report here? Um, okay, well, when you go to uh, click analysis, the uh, all that's on the back end. I know when we first started it, a lot of people were complaining. Oh, it's taking too quick. It's ta you know, it's too quick. Because right. they were used to sitting at their screen for a minute when it was uh, the automated analysis was running. But right. all that's happening on the back end now, and it's split up amongst, you know, bazillion machines. Which is it why it's back. so much faster. And it comes back fairly quickly. But uh, so on this game report, you have the tallies of the classifications that, you know, Stockfish thinks uh, with some, you know, software on top of it for to kind of put a name to the quality of the move. Right. Um, another thing I like uh, down there at the bottom doesn't get a whole lot of attention is the themes. Okay. Uh, we find themes throughout the game um, and kind of, you know, try to associate them with puzzles and lessons. And, um, Let me see that. Some... So I click... So I click Fee and Keto as a theme. Yeah. That started that started when my opponent obviously played G6 and Bishop G7. And that's kind of a lame theme. I it's mean, kind it's, of a lame it's, theme, it's, but it stays present it's, it's, till about yeah. here, which is, I guess, because the Fee and Keto kind of gets ruined. So let's go to a, 
a past pawn theme. Ooh, I played C4. Yeah. And I gave Neil him, Lennon. I gave him a past pawn here. Yeah. That's actually, I never used that. That is pretty cool. Thank you. A lot of people don't use it, and it. I think it's revolutionary. Okay, you know what it would make it better? <laughs> I know you don't. You're giving me feedback. I'll give you feedback right now. There, there's a lot of things that'll make it better. We're kind of <laughs> going with that, you know, to kind of add some, um, you know, some pros and cons to themes because some themes, you know, they have uh, a feeling. It's, it's either a good thing or a bad thing to have a pass right. pawn, or, or you know. No, I, 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 I know that, and I'm, I'm kidding. Obviously, I know we're, we've had a lot of discussion, and I know we're working on that. Um, can we reveal? I mean, like, I'm thinking of that initial epic email thread that we all commented on and had some decently uh -huh. actual, like, what's coming next? Is this all going to look the way it does now, or is there improvements coming to some of this stuff? Um, I think a lot of what you see here might, you know, like with the, with the, the chart data, um, some stuff like that is, is a lot of more hardcore users might might lean towards that a little bit right. if they notice it. Um, we uh, have a lot of things going on right now that's um, not hand holding, but maybe to go more towards the why of a move, not uh -huh. just so you know this is good or bad because the engine says so, but kind of getting towards maybe like what a you know um, you know a typical coach would say or something along those lines. It's, right. Um, we're so we're playing, you know, we've got some things going for that with that effort. Um, also, I don't know when you're going to get to it, but right now in beta, we have one typical complaint that some real passionate people give are, um, you know, the depth. Right now, when you click on the full analysis, it's depth 20. Right. So we have some uh, in beta right now, if you're a beta uh, user and there's some premium hooks in there as well. Um, or you can change the depth to go from you know twenty to thirty, um, and with that you got to wait a little longer. But right. you know it happens. Um, I also wanted to highlight before you click that, or if you click that, you know just click another uh, hardcore feature that people really want is, and this is Bobby would always bring this up to me. Um, I think he just stopped texting me after a while because you have a Bobby yeah. Hess, the man, the myth, the yeah. legend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you if you just click on a position eventually and you, you click on the max analysis, I, I wanted to show everybody. I just clicked it and changed it to depth twenty sixth, and yeah. so that's a that's you know obviously six ply deeper than the standard twenty, but still running fairly fast. I mean it's going to be done here in just a few seconds, which I think is pretty impressive. Again, I think only premium members can change it to a deeper depth than the basic twenty. How does that work? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Well, right now it's in beta. When but I know I know out, you're wanting to get to yeah. this, and this is kind of a cool button. I've actually showed this a couple times on our engine deep dive segments of some of our like G, you know the Grand Chess Tour coverage and stuff. But I don't think people realize what I was doing, so I'll let you describe what this is. Okay, um, that is like a direct pipe to our server pool of of an engine, and it's um, like if you click on a position, it'll just sit there and crank on uh, the fin. Uh, up to depth, I think 99, or some time limit that we send, and we, we can uh, lift that if we needed to. Which is but, which um, is crazy, by the way. Like yeah. that's like you getting chess.com super server computers at your fingertips, and just so you know, that costs us money directly. It comes right out of Danby's paycheck. Don't click that oh, you button. Didn't, you didn't know that? <laughs> oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, I'm uh, kidding. No, but no, but one of the reasons why we have to limit it a little bit is is nothing to do with being stingy. But it, act, I mean, that kind of bandwidth on your servers is like, it can be get pretty heavy duty. But by the way, look at it. I mean, our standard stuff is still pretty strong. I feel like sometimes it's just the optics of it, Dan. Like people think mm -hmm. they're not getting super strong depth because of the way it's being quickly delivered. But okay, look, you know, I guess in this position, Queen G four is pretty obvious. I meant to play it before yeah. I mouse slipped. Let's see how long um, it takes it to find. I want to see how long it takes it to find. Um, Rook takes h7. Ready? Go. Okay, max analysis. Oh, look, it already found. See, even the standard one had already found Rook takes h7 before I put max analysis. So I'm not, I'm not downgrading your feature. You're saying max analysis. I'm just showing people that I think the standard analysis is a lot stronger than people think. The, um, the all that stuff you were just highlighting, um, not the blue row, but that that's all client side. 
um, by this point. So this is uh, stock, those top parts are stockfish right now, right. Uh, running on, on the client. Um, when you click auto analysis uh, after a game, that's all the server stuff. When you click on max analysis, that's the server side. Um, well, and, and, and let me clarify, yeah, client side means it's running on your browser, your computer, everybody, just to, just yeah. to translate developer speak here. Server yeah, side right. means it's on our end. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sure. go ahead. Um, one other cool thing with max analysis that we're kicking around is um, you can change the engine. So we're used oh. to Stockfish. How do I do that? You know, show that? show this click, to me. Click on the little tog, the little gear. Yes, sir. I, yeah. Um, I can't see your screen, but I kind of got the idea. Do oh, you I see. see. Anything there? Oh, yeah. I can go to I can go to Monte Carlo Komodo. Yeah, or say Komodo what? thirteen. Um, so now the next max analysis you do is uh, piped into that engine. Oh, um, and we got some other engines in the works, and you know that are going to be plopped in nice. eventually. Those you'll notice some old stock fishes in there. We just kind of threw in to be curious, but I'll probably get rid of them and just go with the latest and greatest. So look, the client side stock fish said the same move as Komodo Monte Carlo, but the Monte Carlo is much more frugal with its evaluation. Only says that black is a little bit better. The stock fish says black is like significantly better. That's interesting. And if you click, click on one of those blue nodes, like click on one of the moves. Okay. Just click all right, so it should have put a variation in there. Yeah, it did. And it kind of it kind of gives you the the annotation of what the engine what? was. What? So, so if you're ever wondering what engine you were using, um, and you didn't notice it when you were actually looking at it, if you click it in there, it adds a little note. Dude, for you. you should do this more often. Like, show me how to do stuff. This uh, is I actually like really sweet. Uh, this isn't just me. Obviously, there's I gotta throw in Dodge Nate. A couple of variations of a Jesse. A um, couple of variations of a Jesse. We'll call him Jesse Squared. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, Roland, all sorts of smart guys are, are doing this stuff too. Okay. We had a question from Pawn Masseur in chat. He says, what a great feature. He's talking about the themes. Um, he says he likes the feature, but he said what a great feature would be it would be to show in timeline the player when he, she leaves opening theory. I think we actually do do that. An even better feature would be to also add common opening mistakes. So let's go back to the analysis here. So in the report, obviously we have listed all the book moves. So in theory, okay, that takes us to the openings tab. All right, go, go to the analysis tab and like start clicking on the first few ply of your game. You'll right. see the little book, book icon. Yeah, so... There. The book icon, Pawn Masseur, actually tells you as long as you're in book. So this is all book, book, book. So Knight BD2 is probably a variation, but it's not the most common move. And uh -huh. so now we're already, so this tells you that according to this, Knight BD2 is not the most common move. So if I was a coach teaching maybe someone who's not very good at chess, I don't know, someone like Aaron, my, I don't know, just randomly thought of that person. <laughs> um, it's good that I'm not on them, camera what I would tell them to do what I would tell Aaron to do if he was listening would be to go here and say okay if this was the last move this is the first in this place not book is it this mode you might click into the openings tab and say okay if knight bd2 is not the most common move what are the most common moves bishop b2 has been played 1300 times h3 has been played 800 times and c3 is 229 so this is one thing I do wish we could do a little bit differently because to me, Knight BD2 should not be listed as a mistake yet, Dan. When there's 200 games with it, that's hard for me to, especially when, okay, my IM knowledge also knows that this is basically just a move order choice between C3 and Knight BD2. I know that that gets really subjective and it's hard to algorithmically give me what I want, but you understand what I'm saying, right? It seems like- Well, you're assuming being out of book is bad. Well, that's because of the icon it gives here. It gives like the little yeah. target, which says it's a suboptimal move. Just like we have some moves, like some gambits and stuff that um, the engine thinks are terrible, but we had to make a decision. Do we want to call them book because it is a book or do we want to, you know, give you the quality? So right. we made a, the choice to stick with, uh, you know, the ECO right. of, the, of the 
position. But. Well, and I think I think Paul Masur. Um, so I think partly to answer your question, the point is we do already do that. The moves are annotated and tell you when you leave theory, as you can see as discussing. And we're working. This is the kind of stuff we do all the time. Obviously, we're not just sitting around. I mean, I think there's discussion to be had about always because what you're trying to do is basically get the strongest engines in the world to give you advice, but also reference, you know, established theory uh -huh. and knowledge and then find a way to explain all of that in an automated algorithmic way. Right. So night BD two is being given like a, it's suboptimal, not bad. It's being given suboptimal to be fair. And to be fair, I guess if you're looking at the database, it is based on the most popular choices of the top players. Bishop E2, uh, C3, these other moves are more popular. But I think the, the, these are things we're working on all the time. Robert Hess drives us crazy with his complaints about this stuff. Um, right, Dan? Uh -huh. Let's talk bad yeah. about Robert, because he's not here. Um, no, he's fine. I mean, what Whatever. am I going to say? I don't know. Okay. Um, we're going to have to rename this show The State of Shade. <laughs> okay um all right night bd2 was played anyway so yeah you can you can see when you so leave when you book le when you leave book it goes to what the engine thinks so you could have had an excellent non-book move and it would have said so um right yeah so i guess one of the one of the, we should we could consider whether like there's a different marking for a move like night bd2 that is that has been played x amount of times right Mm -hmm. but it's not the most popular move. You know what my crazy idea is? It's a book that's on fire. No? Okay, wait, that's too, that's too politically weird. Okay, no. It's a book that's been closed. Or, stay with me, it's a, it's a, it's a Harry Potter book. No? I'm, I'm losing you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, your thoughts? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't okay. know. We'll get Dallin on the case. Yeah, we'll get Dallin on the case. Um, anyway, so yeah. Um, let's see. At Dripman13 says, is there a way to show possible traps in given lines? Computers say that they are bad, but most of us weaker players, most of us weaker players wouldn't find them because opponents don't play perfectly. So what you're asking for is like, uh, okay, we're working on this actually. This is this is this is kind of like I don't want to call it one of the holy grails of chess, but it is interesting with how technology has influenced the way uh, we're obviously using it to study, get better top players. We had Kromnik on. You know, the evolution has gotten so crazy to the point where former world champions are talking about changing the rules of the game to avoid engines influencing the game so much that it's just a draw, right? But I think that teaching computers to also play weaker hasn't gone over well either because often the only way that we've done that historically has just been sort of like to cut off the ply at a certain point. Like you basically blind them, right? <clears throat> so now they're making blunders that are based on lack of sight, which often doesn't come across as like a human move, right? It's not a human way that this 1200 would blunder. It's a computer way. And we're working on ways, I think, that would find, that would make it so that you know, there can be insights and things given to like basically adding practical advice and elements into uh, what computers can currently do and tell us in games. And I think that that's kind of, you know, the key to making that possible, because otherwise what you're asking for, I forget who it was, D, uh, something in something in chat there, D, 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 uh, Dripman13, is basically very difficult to do, because what you're asking us to do is to give you bad advice to say, play this crappy move because there's a chance your opponent might not see it and there's a trick in it, right? That's like get, telling people, that's like as a coach, I could never do that anyway. It's like if chess, play hope chess. Mm -hmm. Play this move yeah, and they I'm might sure. not see checkmate, right? It, you can't do that. But if there is a way to smartly kind of help you understand um, and have the computers maybe help us make make chess a little more human at the at the level that goes with where someone's at that that could be something that is a little bit like what you're asking for yeah that's um that's in the fire the fire's burning it's maybe hot. it's hot baby it's hot mm -hmm. it's hot um i'm trying to look there's a lot of good questions coming in here by the way keep asking them because i know i'm missing some of your questions um, and we have, uh, we have staff that are kind of gathering these questions and uh, going to bring them, bring them and summarize them. Um, Diamond member Fiddler Crab Season asks, how do you determine when book ends? Well, we have a very updated ECO. You can see it yeah. um, 
on the analysis tab. Or in the details tab, I, I think also that we uh, th throw in the ply with which you left book um, and kind of give you a, maybe a, a verbose name in there. I need to close out some of these tabs. I don't know where my analysis went. What, what in the world? <laughs> I literally just had it open. Okay, we'll just go back to analysis. Well, while he's doing that, uh, since this this was an interesting tidbit to throw out yep. there, guess how many people fall for the uh, four move or the checkmate on live chess a day? A day? Oh, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, of the three, if the three million ish or whatever it is games a day, how many people fall for that thing? You let's let people vote like in different night. chat rooms. We're gonna watch every chat room for a second. I want to get votes on this. Okay, but are you gonna reveal a percentage or the exact like average number of games? Um, I'll give you a, like an average number of a day. Okay, this is gonna be awesome. Okay, BJH says fifty thousand. Woodruff says twenty five. Versing to Torix, you're way low. He says 20 people. Uh, no, dude. It's gonna. We have three and a half million games played every day. Um, this is this is great. Well, I didn't mean to derail. Just while you were playing with crickets there. Uh, well, I, well, I wasn't uh, necessarily. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna game report this game again. One um, one dollar, Bob. One dollar. All right, I've got it back up, so that's good. So, you know. I lost what we were at before, but I was looking at Chess TV chat. Staff member query language. I don't know who that is, but uh, it's a staff member. He says 100, or no, he says 18,000. Rakesh says 5,000. Zen Automaton in Chess TV chat says 500,000. That might be a little high, buddy. Let's have a little more faith. <laughs> Wally Z on YouTube says 750. Alex Ed Voke says 100. We got 450. Uh, we've got wow. got all kinds of guesses. So, all right, I think we've had uh -huh, enough. Uh -huh. really? Dallin, Dallin himself says three thousand four hundred twenty-one. Hmm. If he just cheated to get that number, because he's then oh. okay. All right. So, what's the answer? Drum roll. Uh, very underwhelming. Oh. It's one hundred and four. One hundred and four people every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, that did underwhelm me. Mm -hmm. Real underwhelmed. Can you just um, be whelmed? Because that's not how those I guys. feel. Um, okay, so only 104 people. That actually makes me feel a lot better about humanity. Only 104 people fall for the four move checkmate every day. A day, yeah. Yeah. Now, how often does the same person fall for the four move checkmate? <laughs> okay, let's do that another that's time. That's a special achievement. Uh, Easter egg that uh, we just you know unsubscribe you from the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> we're like, hey, your achievement, you're kicked off the site. You <laughs> you just fell for the same checkmate seven times in a row. Um, no, anyway, well, um, okay. Anything else you want to leave us with? We can't get into some of the other stuff, but I love what we've done. Um, well, we we teased the the deeper depths and the the, yep. the the pipe the pipe to the engine pool that's in beta. So expect that to pop in to the regular population soon. Yep, um, we did good. We got it. Yeah, we got cool things in the in the fire that I probably can't say. Um, it's cool. Yeah. Hey, you got it. You you set your office up real good for this show. I'll give you that. I did. It looks I good. It. I cleaned it. You so. cleaned it. Mm-hmm. I mean, if that's where you're actually doing work for chess.com on that computer back there. Yeah. That's my wife's. Oh, that's your wife's. Okay. So where you do work is right where you're sitting right now. Yeah, right here. Okay. Cool. So it used to be a shed. That's right. Yeah. I remember yeah. doing, I remember we have video calls and I was like looking at your background that you, wow, you really have fixed it up. Well, uh, I'm in the house now. So. Wait, so that's in the house? They let me inside the house. Oh, so you didn't before... actually fix the shed where we used to have video calls from? No, no, it's it's now a total shed. Got it. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. Now it's just a shed. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So I'm glad your wife and daughters let you back in the house. That feels good, Rin. Feels good to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, neither one of them think I work still. So, But um, 
you know, work from home life, they, uh, they tell everybody I just play chess all day and, uh, not true. Only about 10% of the day. So. Well, that's what my kids tell people. Like, actually everyone makes fun of me. They're like, I had a bad, I'm like, I had a bad day. They're like, what happened? Someone forget how the Bishop moves. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I get that. Yeah. yeah. I had a bad day. What happened? Someone forget on Passant. I'm like, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> um, a lot of my opponent was hacking tickets when on Passant happens. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I'm going to let you go. We're going to wrap up this show. This has been a lot of fun. Um, we're uh, we're going to be diving into the AMA section if you want to hang out and chat. Yeah. And uh, looks like we got plenty of good questions coming up. So, all right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say sign off to you, sir. Good talk. All right. I'll see you next time. All right, man. Peace out. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's Dan B, my boy. Yeah, he's pretty mad, I think, because I said he was 1,600 instead of 1,800, but he'll get over it. Don't worry about it. He'll, he'll get through it. It's not that big of a deal. All right. We are going to do a very, very quick review of October, the last month we haven't uh, jumped into, and, and touch on a couple of the things I wanted to. And then when we come back, it's all AMA, all Q&A, your opportunity to give me the tough, hard-hitting questions. So before we do that, I'm going to do the October review, and uh, let's dive in. So here we go. Month of October, um, we, uh, we made an adjustment to Puzzle Battle, which ultimately I think was, was critical. Uh, I forget who added for Sanity. That might have been my boy Michael Green. we got to get Michael on this show next. Um, because we found that while it's great when our most loyal users solve puzzle battles for hours and hours and hours, <clears throat> right, uh, Ray Robson, um, if you're multiplying it past 10, sometimes you can just, like, take away the motivation of others. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like, you know, I coach, like, middle school basketball, and it's kind of like the mercy rule. When you're up, like, 30 points in the fourth quarter, the clock just runs to keep to get the game over with. We don't, You don't do, like... You don't lie on the scoreboard or do anything to lie to the kids because they're smart enough to know that they're getting their bleeps beat, right? But you just get the game over with. Like, this is just like, hey, if you're already crushing everybody, like, we're going to cap you at the multiplier of 10 so that so that everyone else has a chance to still feel okay about themselves. So we did that. Um, I don't know if people know this, but did you know that we have DGT electronic chessboard integration? Did you know that if you have a DGT chessboard at home, you can hook it up and play on your DGT board and you can play games on our live server? Let me say that again. So if you're like, hey, I have a physical chess set and I really like playing online, but I want that feel, right? I want to feel the chess pieces in my hands, right? You can now do that, okay? So if you have a DGT chessboard, you can integrate it and actually play chess on chess.com with it. All kinds of other web stuff. Uh, apparently, Dallin passed the eye exam. Good for him. Um, yeah, Oren laughed at that. He's just trying to not let me know that I'm making him laugh today. So funny, that guy. Um, we got. Oh, we had our meetup in October. Wow, we did that. Where am I in this picture? Well, if you look close, you can see they put the most critical employee dead center in the front right. row. <laughs> there he is. I was going to say, you're going to say, Jay, he's not working here anymore right now. No, <laughs> uh, that's uh, actually, who's that? That's. Oh, that's me right there. That's me. I'm in my swim trunks, my swim, my swim trunkies. I think my wife is hiding in the bushes on the right side somewhere. Bushes on the right side. Okay. A lot of people there. There's Eric. Anyway, we had our company meet up. We were in, where the bleep were we? We were in Cancun. Okay. We were in Cancun. It was all a blur, okay? Not like Biggie Smalls. It was all a dream. I was all, it was Cancun. It was Isle of Man for many. It was Oslo. It was a busy month. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. One of the things that we highlight um, in every one of these reports, if you don't have the links, you should. And again, I'm going to grab this link and just, you know, flash the chess TV chat again. Please. Oh, wait, I did it. That means I'm going to lose where I'm at. Oh, I got lucky. Remember the tab. Um, we also always give a fair play and sportsmanship update. And we list how many accounts we have actioned against. 
Um, and uh, one of the cool things about October is it doesn't look like we closed any titled players. Oh, no, we closed three titled. Yep. So we closed 5,000 accounts for cheating. Three of them were titled players. One of the biggest um, areas of importance that we handle with sensitivity, but we work very hard on is fair play. And so just a reminder of how much we're doing there. Our fair play team continues to expand. They are busy and... Uh, you get rating points back whenever you play against a cheater. Um, so that should make you feel good. But also, um, we are doing so much to improve. In fact, oh, I can't talk about this. But we just launched. Eric's going to kill me. But I'm going to find a way to talk a little bit about this. Wait, no, I can't. Oh, darn it. Inner turmoil. Ah, what can I say? We just launched two new things that are going to help us catch cheaters in a such even better way we're already the best in the business like i'm telling you there's a reason why we can do what we do and other sites can't okay uh at, at best you know sites can do bullet tournaments you know with no increment right where you can catch an autobot cheating but humans can't cheat anyway right like we are able to do the events we're able to do because of our algorithms and because of how confident we are we can act on cheating and we just launched a couple things that we think are going to help us algorithmically catch cheaters even with separate devices, even faster. That's what I'm going to say. I can say that. Come at me. Okay, pretty excited. Um, so, so that was October. Um, the main things I want to say before we open this up for full Q&A, uh, I'm going to find the, um, the main thing I want to talk about here real quick. Yeah, I want, I want to talk about your new home. Some, some people are not totally aware of uh of the new home the the new ability you have to kind of make your home page what you want we're pretty excited about we've even had some users who have uh, hated a lot of our redesigns since the beginning of kingdom come come out and say you know what you got me this is really really cool and i want to take you guys through what my home page looks like so i'm going to go there real quick so my custom home, I got a new game. I like chess today, which is uh, kind of in beta right now. I don't even know if it works if you click it. Oh, it does, finally. Okay, sweet. I don't know if that's just for me as staff or if you guys don't have that. But chess today is kind of our new, it's going to be our new kind of like uh, home page, kind of news home page. I like puzzle battles a lot. Um, events will take me right to the events page where I can see whatever top tournaments are going and go watch my top games, all that stuff, right? Um, but... The, the biggest thing that I can also do is I customize my items so I can have streamers and chess TV right at the top. Now, if you're watching this show, in theory, you might be someone who enjoys chess TV or chess shows. So if you want to customize it, you can click on your home settings, and you'll see I've actually got chess TV right at the top. You can lower it. You can lower it all the way down. Some people keep their stats at the top, right? I even took away tournaments. I didn't want it. I didn't want my awards or my friends showing. That's okay. I love everybody, but you know, no, I didn't need that. But I got my chess TV at the top, so I know when it's live. I list the streamers that I follow right there. Um, my quick links are right there, as you can see. And I've, I've got the activity for the content that I find to be most important to me. So uh, you can also change dark mode or light mode. Now, um, the reason I think that's really cool, and I encourage everybody to do it, is because if you're watching this show, then you already know. Chess TV is something that you like making a part of your day, and you're going to want to make it a more regular part of your day. It's not showing right now because we're already past our allotted time. I don't even think we're on Chess TV anymore. This show's gone a little long. Um, but normally, you'd see Chess TV playing right there at the top. Okay, That would be above the streamers list. Then I have my streamers, then I have my stats and everything all the way down. So again, head over to your homepage and make Chess TV a regular thing you see so that you know every time we have a featured event that's live and add streamers so that you can follow that because like we said, if you're here, we assume that you care about that. So uh, you customize your homepage and uh, and make it, make it one of the top things. So, all right, last break. When we come back, we have the AMA questions, all the things you've been bringing us. We're going to roll through it. It's going to be fun. Datachess.com returns in just a couple minutes.
And we are live again with our final moments here for the State of Chess.com show. State of sharing, as we like to call it. We've been sharing a lot, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. Hopefully you guys like this. Hopefully you let us know. I mean, it's it's obviously a uh, an online chess community kind of power user show uh, for those that really care about the thoughts that we're putting into stuff, the insights, getting to know the personalities, the people working hard at chess.com um, that you wouldn't otherwise know. So hopefully you guys uh, like this stuff, and uh, if there's things you think we can add to it, please let us know. Before we dive in to the Q&A, while I have your attention, I want to remind you the Puzzle Battle World Chess Championship qualification is rolling on. You still have an opportunity to submit a video with you doing Puzzle Rush with a score of 35 or more. We know that that's tough. We know that's tough, but that's why a World Championship title will be rewarded for those who uh, get in. Uh, we've got tons of top grandmasters already committed to the final. Hikaru Nakamura, Maxime Vache Le Gras, Ray Robson, to name a few. Um, and um, we have many more big names expected to join the fold. But uh, if you want to, if you want to get in, in on the action, score 35 or more on video. Post it to social media at chess.com or use the hashtag. Do it by December 15th, and you will get an invitation into the qualification event that seats the final two people into our bracket of 16. That event is how we're going to kick off 2020, and it is going to be a ball. Speaking of events that lead up to 2020. We have the Sitkis, which is a an over-the-board tournament um, from Barcelona. Apparently, as I hear, one of the most amazing experiences for people that go there. Uh, it's just a great tournament, very well run. Uh, we have the official broadcast of it. So Peter Dockers, uh, Leonard Utz, our, our European broadcast team, will be on site. Uh, so make sure you tune in to that. The World Rapid and Blitz will be right after Christmas. Not exactly sure who the commentary team will be yet. Uh, we know Grandmaster Robert Hess will be holding it down for sure. I, would, I may be joining him along with some other people. And then, as we said, the Puzzle Battle World Championship kicks things off. The Nakamura Napomni Ashi Speech Chess Championship will happen before the New Year. It will probably happen. I mean, I'm just going to say full disclosure. The moment Yon Napomni Ashi either wins the Grand Prix or is knocked out of the Grand Prix in Jerusalem, we will have the Speech Chess Championship match with him and Hikaru Nakamura. So as soon as that's over, Jan is uh, is uh, going to be getting uh, emails and pings from us on Slack. He already knows it. He's already agreed. Uh, Hikaru, also very busy, but knows that we plan to get that thing in. And we hope to wrap up the Speech Chess Championship match, I mean, event, meaning whoever wins that match will play against Wesley So in the finals before Christmas is our hope. So uh, stay stay very much attuned for that. So, okay, here we go. We are we are going to dive into some Q&A here. Um, there's, uh, there's been all kinds of questions. I'll try to watch chat as well, but I've got my staff team helping, helping with some questions, and I'm going to start with those. So let's see, what do we have here? We had a, a chat question from uh, once upon a time with the with the word pawn. What? That is a sick pun, bro. Dad pun, strong. Your dad pun game. Anyway, once upon a time, 22. I want to know what's new in December and January 2020. Well, we've been talking a little bit about some of the analysis. What can I say? What can I say? Um, Dallin? You're in chat. What can I say? What can I talk about? Oh, well, okay. Android just launched. Android is now live. Okay, in December, Android will be live to all users. Right now, it's live to, I think, at least 10%, if not more, which means Android users now have Puzzle Rush. Uh, they now have Chess TV. Okay, so for a lot of our streamers, that's going to lead to some viewership boost. You can watch Chess TV on your Android device, tablet, or phone. Uh, that's a big one. Um, I'm waiting for Dallin to tell me other things I can talk about. Um, Dan already touched on some that, you know, we probably already said too much on because we really believe in the potential of what unlocking some more insights and analysis stuff could do. And so um, we really want to keep that a little bit under wraps and, and keep focusing on it until we have something awesome to give to give everybody. Um, it'll be 100% over the month, as Dallin has just said in the Twitch chat. Um what else what else what else um puzzle battles championship i'm trying to think of other things we're allowed to chat about um oh bug house tournaments we are building out bug house arenas and tournaments so if you are a doubles slash bug house player uh which is uh two boards chess for those of you who don't know it 
um, uh, you take a piece and give it to your partner. We will have Bug House arenas and tournaments very, very soon live. We've actually already been beta testing them. They've been on streams, and that's going to be really cool because the systems and the tournaments uh, that we're bringing probably have never existed before, even for other servers. Fix uh, the free inner chess server that had uh, bug house tournaments before. We're pretty excited about this. So that should be a lot of fun. And the reason that's key is because once we've got that kind of perfected and the bugs are worked out and we're no longer in beta for bug house tournaments, um, we are going to have a bug house championship and eventually crowd a bug house world championship team. So it will happen in 2020. That is a big bleeping deal. You know what else has happened in 2020? The Pro Chess League. Uh, we actually do have a new California Unicorns logo. Uh, my three-year-old drew that, everybody. So I asked her, I said, hey, honey, uh, we don't have a logo yet for the Unicorns. Um, could you do something for me? And there you go. That's what happens when my three-year-old draws a unicorn. So there you go. Um, but anyway, jokes aside, we do have, we do have, you can go to ProChessLeague.com. We're pretty excited about the new Pro Chess League. Uh, it's international. It's it's uh, the best players in the world, and and we're pretty pumped about it. Um, so uh, thank you, Chuck Moulton, there for the bits. We know you love Buckhouse. So there you go. There's some stuff. I'm gonna scroll up. Next question. Next question. Uh, liquid egg product wasn't Puzzle Rush being investigated by the FDA for being too addictive? I guess I should read questions before I read them out loud. No, we're not being investigated by the FDA, but. It is pretty addictive. Agreed. Liquid Ed product, we love you. Just kidding. Uh, no, it is awesome. Thank you for that. Um, on that note, actually, I'm going to do one last kind of uh, product share because we talked about the Puzzle Battle World Championship and Liquid Ed Products Puzzle Rush comment just reminded me that we, ditched it. we just did this huge Puzzle Rush reset. And, and obviously, we were kind of waiting for this before we were going to do the Puzzle Battle World Championship. And this article has all the details of how and why we did this. And I'm just going to remind everybody of the quick high-level points. Um, but basically, you know, when we launched Puzzle Rush, it, it surprised us in terms of how popular it was. And when the impossible became possible, where all of a sudden it became clear that some people were memorizing 50,000 freaking puzzles, right? And, and they didn't memorize all 50,000 because they didn't have to, right? Because they would get past the easy ones and then the smaller group of 2,500 plus puzzles was maybe only a few thousand. That was reasonable, right? And, and which is crazy, right? But that's what was happening. And so it really put us to the test. We, we I don't want to say we completely rewrote, but Roland, who we're going to get on this show at some point, one of my favorite human beings on the planet, works super hard for our fair play team. He's basically our head of statistics. Roland Walker is the chief data scientist at chess.com. That's what I call him. He does things like improve our algorithms for puzzles, improve our algorithms for cheat detection. Roland basically got hard to work, and with his crew of people, we not only improved, but almost completely revamped the way we're able to add puzzles to our database and authenticate that they are a good puzzle, so not multiple solution, also satisfying. And we went from about 50,000 total puzzles, total tactics trainer puzzles, to now we're at, now as of today, we're at almost 170,000. When we did this launch, when we did the reset, we were already about 150,000, and also the algorithm in, in which we serve people makes it almost impossible for them to ever see a position again. Um, you know, there were some bugs and kinks at first, but it's been worked out. And now when you solve puzzle battles, it just makes it so much more fun that you know you and your opponent are really thrown down on just pure calculation, intuition, speed. It's awesome, right? And so... Um, the Puzzle Rush reset was a huge thing we were waiting for before we could ever do our first ever Puzzle Battles World Championship, and so we're pretty psyched about that. Uh, thank you, Liquid Ed Product, for reminding me of that. Any update on when Puzzle Battle is coming to iOS? Um, Dallin, you want to take that one in the chat? I don't know when Puzzle Battle is coming to iOS. I know we're working on it. Um, and in this world, I've learned over time, despite my best efforts, Eric eventually broke me. Um, now I don't make false promises. I used to do it all the time. Um, so I'm not going to I'm not going to say it, but it, you know, it's very difficult to give deadlines, but we are working on it and the iOS team moves very quickly. One of our best tech teams, they 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 bring new features out very quickly and so um, we're pretty psyched about Puzzle Battles coming to iOS. It is a little bit tricky because of the visual format and the way Puzzle Battles kind of displays, but we're getting there and we're making sure it's going to work. Um, in the next few months, right? That is that is developer speak by Dallin in the chat. 
ignoble that is our head of design and product he is the chief make everything look good officer okay that is who dallin is he is literally one of my favorite people and also he literally is head of how everything is awesome and looks good so he really knows i don't so dallin said it next few months um let's see what else we got um bad axe 99 says did he say when the next round of speeches champion is going to be played as i said we're working on it as soon as yonda pomniashi is no longer playing in the grand prix Dritman13 says, is there a way to show possible traps in given lines? Most Okay, so we talk, I talked about that a lot earlier. Um, yeah. Bonus22 says, openings trainer. I think aside from Chessable, most platforms have failed to correctly implement this. And what I'm going to say is that was what we didn't talk about with Dan and Chessply. I'm going to say that. We've been working on something like this, and it's been pushed back for a long time. And Chessable is an amazing product. John Bartholomew is a great friend of mine. Uh, they've done an amazing job and uh, we agree that we want to break into uh, this market and we actually have kind of some of our own things that we think are, are pretty cool improvements and, and even even different ways to to look at that and we are working on it that's what i'm going to say best i can say for now uh king's bishop can we have a live chat wind down pop out don't even know what that means daniel but i love you yeah is it possible Oh, move it around. User snap. Daniel, user snap. Request that. You quit, click that little question mark bubble and user snap it. Make a request right there. I like that idea. Uh, Chess Society, will it be possible in the future to reset stats and tactics or puzzle rush, meaning for your own personal stats? I assume you're asking. That's interesting. You can reset. You can reset your own tactics rating. You cannot reset lifetime puzzle scores. I don't know why you would want to do that. Because in theory, if you're embarrassed about a previous lifetime score, you could just get a new one because you're better than that now. I don't think people want... Like, if someone's lifetime best score is 17, like, they're proud of that. And if they get 18, now they're proud of that. Why would you want to reset your own puzzle rush score? I'm not sure we've thought of a use case for that. Uh, you can reset your own tactics ratings. and you So you can reset your experience in that way. Um, but uh, I need to understand a little bit more what you envision as far as why you would ever want to reset your own record. Um, EO Gule says, Danny promised a few months ago Chess.com would have almost everything you could want from Chess Space. How, I didn't promise that it would be done in a few months. I did say that we are working on that. Yes. So you caught me. Red-handed. But no, I know. Um, we are working on that. And... I would say that's that's a pretty impossible. I don't know if I said every, almost everything. You can't have everything because one of the things Chessbase is, which is an amazing software. I've used it my whole life as a young professional player and until I was a real boy and all that stuff. Um, is it? Uh, it's local to your hard drive, right? Chess.com is probably not going to be diving into the business of physical software download. Everything we do is going to be online, server, cloud base right kind of based and i think inherently as far as tech even with technology going as far as it has now elon musk is about to launch these like satellite internet things have you heard about these things they're going to give us all like super internet all over the world in the next six years so that's awesome so if somehow internet doesn't become an issue and everything is online then that's the case but a lot of what chess base's heavy lifting is is the local hardware running on your on your cpu as far as database stuff, I think our analysis, if you combined what we have at chess.com slash analysis with the Master Games Explorer and you put them together in some sort of different way, you're already pretty close to what 90% of people would use Chessbase for. To quickly search Master Games, add your own notes and analysis, save it. You can already do that. You get a unique URL. Uh, we're working on some organizational aspects there, but overall, a lot of it's there. But as far as the efficiency that Chessbase has, the local hardware, that's not really a market we're going to be diving into, I can tell you. So we need Elon Musk to get those internet balloons up, huh, buddy? Hey, can you get those internet balloons up, huh? All right, good talk. Daniel Wrench from BJH, how does Danny drink his coffee? I, black. I get the Blue Bottle uh, subscription. This is tea. I've had a horrible sore throat. I've been sick all week. I'm still sick. That's why we're going to be wrapping up this show here in a sec. Done a lot of talking. Um, but normally just black, baby. If the coffee's not good enough to drink it black, I don't want it. Okay? 
Joe Slime 81 says, Cheska, when you run an in-depth analysis on a game, what settings are used? I just use the basic ones, but as you saw with, uh, if you're a premium member, you can do the max depth. Um, I changed it to depth 26, and that ran pretty quickly. That's pretty awesome. Hopefully I answered that question right. Uh, Dripman13, any sort of endgame trainer in the works? <laughs> Ocean, uh, not Ocean Pawn, Once Upon a Time. I love that name. Can we have the option to take back a move when playing with friends for fun? I think you can. You, we have the option you can get more time. Is it like... That's a, that's a very, very good question here. Okay, very nice. I don't know that... So staff can take back moves. If I play a quick bullet game real quick, let's just do it. Um... If I play, if I play a quick bullet game here. Oh, the guy played a Scandi. Hello, oh, well. Hi guys, it's me, John. Team Scandi. Hi guys, it's me, John. Team Scandi. I think he's already completely lost. Hashtag Team Scandi. Um. The uh. So there's no way to offer a take back. That's not a bad idea. You know what? User snap. Use your user snap. Oh, unrated game. In, in unrated? I think it has to be unrated. Really? Yeah. Okay. Not rated games. Unrated okay. Games. Yeah, I don't even care that much about this uh, this mate here. But, um, yeah, okay. I think, Wind, I think Chesswind is right that... Uh, only unrated games can you can you do stuff like okay that. so i think you can apparently in unrated games i'm going to finish off this game for everybody real quick um because he's not castling he's not going anywhere we are going to destroy his face right now um ooh, look at that how many pins does it take to kill a cat 17. how many pins does it take Okay, so unfortunately we can't do take backs. All right, you back. Can, you can try. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah, hold on. See. Studio chest. Yeah. Let's see it. I still don't see it. Hi guys, this is me, John, Team Scandy. Um, I don't think you can. I think we need to request that. I don't think you can. You can give your opponent more time. We've added that, but okay, all right, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave this and resign. Um I'll I'll resign the game for you. Studio chess wins. Um Okay, last couple questions. Um yeah, so we'll uh you can user snap that. I think that that's an interesting request. If people wanna give the option to take back moves with their friends, why not? That I I mean I, seriously, we we will do that. I'm gonna do it after the show. Um, Capablanca says, I want a chess.com desktop app. Nope, we're not doing it. Love you. Long Chan Sellor says, when is the next Arena King season? After the Pro Chess League. So we will be taking a break. The Pro Chess League season will run. The next Arena Kings will start after the Pro Chess League in 2020. So with that, um, Mannered Monkey says, when playing Guess the Move, guessing mate correctly does not register it as a correct guess. If that's true, that just sounds like a bug. Um, and we should, you know, you should report that. You're really good at finding chess.com bugs, Mannered Monkey. And we appreciate your time. So, <laughs> just kidding, buddy. Um, and uh, you want focus mode back. Once upon a time, man, once upon a time is bringing the heat. I hope that Dallin has taken notes. Um... Okay, well, this has been a lot of fun. Um, I think uh, I think we're gonna wrap it up, Buttercup. I'm gonna go hit some lunch. Um, I got a little basketball practice later today. I'm gonna head over to Home Depot, maybe Bed Bath and Beyond if I have enough time. Um, and uh, thank you there for the gifted sub, and uh, thank you for everyone that's been with us all day. Stick around, watch chess. And uh, we'll see you for the next stateofchess.com probably sometime around the end of quarter one, um, 2020. Until then, everybody, peace. <laughs>